Show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericavariety.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. It's time to get the weekend party started. This is Easy Talk Live, featuring your host, Eric EZ Zuli. This is the place to be if you're all about promotion, celebrities, and social media. We'll hook it all up for you with fun, facts, and fascinating talk. Now, here's your host and the main man, Eric EZ Zuli. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to Easy Talk Live on Voice America World Talk Radio. I am Eric Easy Zuli with my beautiful co-host, Dr. Dante Sears. Hey Eric, can you hear me? I can hear you, Dante. And you know what? I think all the listening audience, I think all the viewing audience out there in Easy Way Land is uh, anxiously awaiting this show, man, because this is an extra special show. I got one of my good friends coming on, actually two of my good friends coming on, Kevin Sorbo, which everybody remembers from Hercules, Hercules, Andromeda, oh, yes. Meet the Spartans, and uh, the biggest new project he just uh, recently did, Gods, I love this, Gods Not Dead. I mean, that was no, awesome. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Then we have Mel Novak coming on, who's uh, been with Bruce Lee, and he's always the villain in all the big films. Man, this is going to be a real fun show. So today's show is Heroes and villains. I thought that was a good name. What'd you think, Dante? I thought that was a great name. I thought that uh, it was good teamwork how we came up with it. Well, I think I came up with it and then you made it look really good. Oh, okay. You you know, I heard sometimes a leader has to take the credit, so that's fine. Well, I, I think I came up with the actual I'm, title. I'm just really I- glad to know that all of my little girl dreams are coming true today. Getting to meet Kevin Sorbo, <laughs> the Hercules, you know, Eric, I was supposed to grow up and marry him, <laughs> like many, like many young girls. But I, me, huh? you know, Sam Sorbo beat all. I, I, I don't think Sam would like that comment. <laughs> no, he's you know, but he's a dreamboat for so many young women out there, you know. So I think it's it's really awesome that he, you know, his story. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. Later. And I mean, his story, we're going to get all of his story, guys. We're going to really uh, get to uh, get to know uh, uh, Kevin. You know, I met Kevin at the Wild Hogs movie premiere. I still remember the day I met him. And I remember everybody was like kind of not being cool to me, being the guy with the microphone, trying to get uh, get the interviews. And, and uh, I remember John Travolta came over to me like for like a couple seconds because I said, John, take your face off and come over here. And I kind of met like, you know, stop being so stuck up. And he came over and gave me a little shout out. But Kevin Sorbo was the only like celebrity on that carpet that really actually came and, and gave, you know, up and comer that's on the carpet love and support and said, hey, you know, and, and actually did an interview with me. And I'll tell you guys in a that's second awesome. what I actually told him when I when I when I met him. Yeah. And so I'm excited to have him on. I haven't seen Kevin in a while and I'm very happy to see what he's doing with his beautiful, uh, you know, wife, Sam and what they're doing for God and what they're doing to put a great positive message out. And we're going to be talking about a lot of Kevin's story and, and uh, you know, and then Mel Novak, man, Mel, no- Mel Novak's the villain in all the films. He's got a big uh, movie on uh, uh, Amazon prime right now. And uh, this is exciting, man. Voice America, World Talk Radio, Easy Way TV, I Launch Global. Man, this is going to be everywhere. And by the way, shout outs to uh, uh, Tyler's Coffee, by the way. This, uh, this, this uh, episode is brought to you by Tyler's Coffee, which is absolutely no acid, complete healthy. And you go to tylerscoffee.com. Use the promo code Easy Way, letter E, letter Z, W-A-Y, uh, for a 20% discount. Uh, but I'm stoked, man. We're going to have Kevin Sorbo coming on here pretty soon, right after this commercial break. So, uh, Dante, go ahead and, uh, you know, get, get us into break. Well, hey, it's Dr. Dante Sears here on Easy Talk Live, and we so can't wait after this break to bring you Kevin Sorbo. So uh, go and get your Tyler's coffee, and we'll see you on the other side. And we're clear. Yes, now I can fix this calic. <laughs> <laughs> crazy what's up kevin how you doing buddy hey, kevin. Streaming live, the leader in internet talk. you gotta undo your audio give us, give us some audio audio there you go how's that there you go now we can hear you 
Make sure you're close to the microphone because you know, man, you know Jeff Spinard and Voice America. I, I heard you kind of started out with them and uh, you played with their their family. You got to make sure your audio is really good because it's on the radio too. There you go. We're there. There you go. Now you're Oh, good. wow. Much better. Yeah. About making the mistakes, taking the chances. This is a so fun show. Man. How, long, how long is the break, guys? About a minute. Oh, fine. What you can accomplish cool. when you uh -oh. And I'll wait, for, I'll wait for that then to uh, pay my compliments to the doctor there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Compliments going right back your way. Thank you. Eastern time on the Voice America. But we are live still on YouTube, so everybody's out there on YouTube land. They're they're Very watching. Very cool. Um, where live events? Where where are you guys located? Orange County. Both of you? Uh-huh. So you're both. Are you saying the yeah. same studio? You're in the same studio then. Live events to see yep. all of our. Oh yeah. yes, we are. It's a it's a it's a pretty big studio. She's on she's on one side, where I'm the other, but uh, green screen Very behind cool. us. We've got hey Eric, you want to tip your camera a little bit? You got a little white showing on the side, or a little bit of your screen showing on the side. There you go. There you go. Next level, call Jeff All right, Spinard I'm going to do a quick Facebook share. I'm going to hold in my, you know, my reaction to go back on air. Jeff Spinard at four eight zero. I want, I want a reaction. Four seventeen. All right, it's coming. Voice <laughs> America. See here. Voice America is where you are and where you want to be. So everybody out there watching, man, we're getting ready uh, to, to have a lot of fun. If you guys have questions, uh, the comments are on there on the right uh, for any of our guests or, or our hosts. We'll be right back here on Voice America World Talk Radio, Easy Talk Live. 20 seconds. Ask the experts. Call toll free right now. You said you posted the show, Eric. I can't find it. Yeah, it's on my Facebook. It's on Easy Talk Live. It's on Easy Way TV. It's, uh, it's on the blog. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. I've got to make this Supergirl curl happen. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. Hey, you're listening to Easy Talk Live. For all you entertainment fanatic fans out there, brought to you by ProductionSanDiego.com. It's time for entertainment and more. Hey, guys, what's going on? Welcome back. This is the Entertainment and More segment. In fact, the whole show is going to be Entertainment and More, and, and we're going to sp we're focus on the more side of things. And this guy is one of the biggest people in entertainment. Started out his career. Well, let's let's just get right into uh, into your story after I tell everybody how, how awesome you are, uh, Kevin. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 Engineer, if I can get wait, some... Wait, wait, uh, Eric, can I do it yet? Come on, you have to do it. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> so, engineer, let me get some music in the background. Let's tell everybody who might not know. I mean, you've got to be on a rock if you don't know who Kevin is. But Sorbo received his international stardom when he booked the lead role in Hercules, The Legendary Journeys, 1993 to 1999. And the most watched TV show in the world, airing in 176 countries. Following that success, Sorbo had the lead role in Captain Dylan Hunt in the um, the the Ro Rodenberry Andromeda. I mean Andromeda. Come on, that's the that's the movie right there. That the is. first show created uh, by by Roddenberry after the original Star Trek series, Andromeda debuted as the number one hour long show in the first run syndi uh, syndication and remained the number one for its entire run in 2000 to 2005. So notable movies include Cull of the Conqueror, Walking Tall, love that movie, uh, The uh, Payback, uh, Avenging Angel, Meet the Spartans, uh, goes on and on and on. Hey, welcome to the show, Easy Talk Live. You ready to do it the easy way, Kevin Sorbo. Hey, how you doing? Good to be here. I love that, I love that applause. I, I expect that from my three children every time I come home. <laughs> Speaking of that, man, I thought it was so cool that uh, you did uh, uh, God's Not Dead with your whole family. Uh, you know, I mean, no, I did Let There Be Light with my family. That's oh, the Let There Be Light. I'm sorry. God's Not Dead, we did about four years ago. That was a, a $2 million movie that made over $100 million worldwide. Pretty wow. Amazing. I, I wish I owned it. I don't own that movie. But I mean, you're the director, though, right? Uh, not in God's Not Dead. I directed Let There Be Light. Okay. So, so what let a great let return on investment. Let There Be Light is my most recent one. It was in theaters October, November, December. It's out right now. Go to go to uh, Amazon. Go to Best Buy. Go to Walmart. Go whatever. Uh, the Easy Way Network because uh, we're pushing that like crazy. It's a good. It's a good family movie. It's a good movie. So uh, I hope you guys check it out. So so Let There I mean, Be Light. I want to hear what that's about. Yeah. Let There Be Light is. Um, I play the world's greatest atheist. If you know, uh, Hitchens, Dawkins are like these really popular atheist guys. 
And um, I'm divorced for eight years now. I had a son die at the, when he was only eight. I got two younger sons who were six and four at the time. Now they're 14 and 12. And I have a, um, I've distanced myself from my family. I've, I've just, he's gone on a war path around the world, disparaging anybody who is a Christian. He takes on the highest, uh, uh, big path, Billy Graham type of guys, and he destroys them in debates. And he has a life-changing thing that happens. He has a vision that happens to him that challenges his worldview. And the only one he can turn to was his ex-wife because she's the only one who knows them the best. And it's a story about love, redemption, and hope. Uh, I directed it. My wife wrote it. Uh, my two boys are in it as well. And uh, it did really well in theaters. And uh, now it's on a DVD and uh, word of mouth has been fantastic on it. So I, I, it's a good I, family. It's a, a great good story. Family. I was watching on the interview that uh, the, the way that that project actually got created was kind of interesting. I mean, your wife called up a friend of hers that she knew just to kind of pitch them on the script and the idea and yeah. it, he jumped on it and you guys flew right away to to have the meeting and stuff and tell us a little bit more of the inside of how that project got started well my wife came with the idea she wrote the script she got a hold of a dear friend of ours dan gordon dan gordon is an academy award nominee director i mean a uh, writer he wrote uh, the hurricane with denzel washington fantastic movie he wrote um a wider kevin costner western he was the showrunner michael landon series highway to heaven and um he d did a rewrite on it and I got a call a couple weeks later from our investor and he said, hey, I love the stuff you do. Uh, do you have anything like that? When we flew to New York City, we pitched him. He wrote a check. Three months later, we were filming. Six months later, it was in theaters. That's unusual. Most, That's most projects that come from an idea to uh, make a new movie screen take three to five years. And you know mm -hmm. that. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. an easy process to get the money. Money never chases the project unless they're doing the 17th adventure movie. Uh, uh, um, what are, uh, Avengers or Pirates of the Caribbean. They know they got a, a formula with that. But mm -hmm. original products take a long time to get to the screen. Yeah. So was there any like major prayer that went over this or something that you know helped out to happen sorry eric i saw your question as my uh, mouth. I, i'm loaded man i, I got this show well, is no, I, mean, I, I i don't know you know it's my first really faith-based movie i think every every movie is faith-based i mean if you're an atheist that's a religion now i mean you have to have a pretty strong faith to believe in absolutely nothing so <laughs> i think they have more faith than most christians do but um they have a, I, they have a faith you know, I, my first faith-based movie is a movie called what if it's from the same writers that did, and same production company, Pure Flix, that did uh, God's Not Dead. I think What If's a better movie than God's Not Dead, so I highly recommend to people to check out What If. John Ratzenberg is in it. He's from Cliff from Cheers. Um, uh, Christy Swanson, the original Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But that sort of set me on a road to do more family-friendly movies. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I've been very busy. I mean, since Andromeda finished, I've shot 55 movies. In the last 11 years, there's probably 20 I wish I didn't do, but <laughs> they're they're out there, and um, you know I'm I'm having a good time. It's it's I'm staying busy. I got three more movies coming out this year as well. So Kevin, we got some fans that are on here right now. I'm gonna give a shout out to my boy Robert Clancy who has like 800,000 fans. So thank you for sharing this, brother. I appreciate you. Um, uh, Carrie Brooks is on here. She says hi, uh, and uh, Peyton uh, Moriah. I was lost for a minute, but now I use with TV. Oh, good. Uh, they're they're watching and. Uh, uh, Michael Paris says, "What what what is, what if is the best?" Uh, okay, guys, I'm just trying to give Very you some cool. up here. Thank you, thank you. So 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 Kevin, I mean, you a lot of people know you. Obviously, you know Hercules. You were in in that series for a real long time, and 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 yeah. I, I, a lot of crazy episodes, man. I mean, <laughs> you you were like a, uh, I mean that 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 was it, right? That kind of like launched you know what, that that launched my career. There's no question. I've done some guest spots on Cheers, The Murder She Wrote, The Commission, stuff like that. But that was supposed to just be five two-hour movies. Uh, Anthony Quinn played Obstin, played Zeus, so it was a, amazing for me to work with such a Hollywood legend like him. But I, um, I it, it kicked into a series right away, and it went for seven years. You mentioned we passed Baywatch as the most watched show in the world. It was crazy, and it was. I lived in New Zealand seven years. It was amazing and that obviously got everything going for me without that show i wouldn't have gotten andromeda i wouldn't have got the things that followed so i'm very grateful for uh, universal and uh, sam sam raimi was our executive producer who we went on to direct all the spider-man movies and stuff so i uh, got very lucky so it, it was um it was a blast it was long hours but i i loved it T television was uh, you know, 14 hour days and I said two hours a day lifting weights. And I appreciate the comments I saw earlier by our good doctor there. 
Um, so we should have met earlier. You are lovely. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just a little girl's dream, but I was like, seriously, I'm going to marry this guy. I used to watch all the Hercules shows. Well, you're very kind. I know I'm an old dude now, but it was, it was, <laughs> it was a fun part of my life. But I mean, isn't that like the total Hollywood romance story? I mean, your co-star, you know, I used to be an uh, actress myself and like you end up falling in love with your co-star and marrying her. Well, I mean, did you meet on set or did you guys get the job together? No, we met on the set. She came down during uh, season five on it. She doesn't like me saying this, but every two weeks they send a beautiful woman for me to work with. So it was a great dating program for me. So. <laughs> well, I'm actually going to show a couple uh, a couple of videos and a couple of things uh, of what you guys do because we're talking about Sam now. Um, and and I mean, so you went from Hercules and you went to all these different projects, and now you're you're a father. You have you have a wife, but you're still hardcore into the industry. It looks like, but for God, you know, I mean, I just gotta be real, man. I, I, I give so you a many lot of questions about that too. But go ahead, Eric. I, I I give you a lot of props because I I do the same thing, man. I, I I fight for the light. You know, I'm I'm a vessel for God. I tell people all the time, and it's kind of hard to to fight for God in the industry. You know, have you ever got have gone through any obstacles? And oh doing no, it? there's no question. I mean, if it wasn't for the independent world, I probably I would never career right now. I mean, it's it's amazing to me in an industry that screams for tolerance and freedom of speech. It's pretty much a one way street with them, which I find that the, the hypocrisy is so massive. And that's too bad. I mean, I've got atheist friends. I have agnostic friends. We have great discussions, great debates. We still part as friends. I don't understand the hate and the anger people have towards somebody who has a faith. Uh, it's, it's weird to me. But, um, you know, it is what it is. What are you going to do? So I, I'm I, I, my next movie is a, co a comedy. I start shooting in July. I'm directing that one as well. I've got a baseball movie we're shooting later in the year up in Canada. So it's not, you know, I've got a good mixture of stuff. I mean, I did a movie a few years ago. I played a serial killer. So I'm, I, I kind of mix it up. If I like the role, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to take it because in what number one, I like to keep working too. So yeah, uh, that was a, that's actually my, my that's my church right there. Right, I grew up at that little church you just showed in in Mound, Minnesota. It's oh, a little cool. town west of Minneapolis. I grew up on the shores of Lake Minnetonka. My little hometown was home to Tonka Toys. Get it? Lake Minnetonka, Tonka Toys. <laughs> oh, now I see the chat. Hey, Peyton, Mariah, Robert Clancy. All so, right. How so, I Kevin, uh, like the, the Hercules thing, how did that get started? Like, was that just like a standard audition and then you just made it and then you well, just... Yeah, it? I mean, it was a typical audition for Hollywood. I mean, initially, I'm a, I'm a big guy. You know, I'm 6'3". I, I weighed 225, 230 when I did the series. I um, work out all the time. I grew up playing sports, football, basketball, baseball. I love all the sports. Um, uh, but it was it was a hell of audition process. They they had me brought me in seven times over two months, and they they read twenty eight hundred actors in North America, and I got down the last three guys in at Universal. Went there and uh, I, I um, did a final audition. Went up to Vancouver to guest on Michael Chiklis's show, The Commish, and they called me up there and said. You got the role. You are now half God. So there you go. That's in it from there. You are half God. Is that what it is? Well, that's Hercules, Hercules was half God, right? So. Yeah, interesting. So, so has anybody ever tried to cut off your hair? Any crazy fan stories or anything? <laughs> that's that, that's Samson. That's mythological. That's, I was about to say that's Samson. Yeah. I know, but still, you had such long was, hair. That was your thing. I was mythological. So, um, but uh, that, there were jokes with that. You know, I do a lot of charity golf events. Golf is kind of my mm. passion. I, I love to golf. And my because my dad was a school teacher, but he worked at a golf course in the summers up there in Minnesota. So um, it was a sport that I got hooked on and I get invited to a lot. I've golfed with everybody from Tiger Woods to the late Arnold Palmer. I've been very, very fortunate. What's Everything your game? Golf, charity what's, your, what's your usual game? Hitting 400 yard drives. What's your usual game? What's your, what do you usually golf? I'm, I'm, I've been in the seventies most of the time. I'm a pretty low handicap. Oh, nice. So I, I, I'm pretty good at the game and I enjoy it and I love it. And I, uh, if I'm not working, I play every day. I played this morning already. So, so Kevin, you seem pretty faith based, and and it's obvious what your projects are doing. Was there like an a, tur a turning point somewhere through the years of your life that kind of? No, not not necessarily. I mean, I, I grew up in a Christian household, went to church all the time. But I remember when I was 13 years old, I went to uh, see Billy Graham speak, the late Billy Graham, and uh, it was outside St. Paul at the fairgrounds. There's about 200,000 people or more, and I went up to. Uh, after he spoke, I was just mesmerized. And it was a hot August night, full moon was out. And I went up to speak with one of his, one of his assistants. And we, you know, we just talked, did a little prayer. And all of a sudden a hand went on my head and I turned around and it was Billy Graham. And I looked up at him and the moon was directly behind his head. So it was like this halo around his head. It was like, ah, uh, you know, so <laughs> I, heard the, I heard the trumpets playing. So it was, it was kind of a cool uh, moment that always stuck with me. It was, it was pretty neat. 
So, so um, you played a lot of roles. You, you've done a lot in your life. I mean, do you, do you coach? Do you mentor? Do you do anything to, to help up and comers at all? Are you I, uh, I go and speak to some of my old acting classes and do things like that. We, um, this next movie we're doing, we're taking a lot of, uh, of um, trainees on there so they can learn, you know, both sides of the camera. And that's, that's what I did on Hercules. And that's so why I got into acting. I mean, directing back then, I started directing on Hercules. So I spent a lot of time talking to the camera department, the special effects department, the makeup and there. I really wanted to understand everybody's job. So when I started directing, I'm, I'm smart enough to know that I don't know their jobs. So I, I don't, I, I, I like to hire good people, but I don't get in the way of what they do. I might give them my vision, but I really expect them to know what they're doing as well. I mean, I like to keep an open set, a fun set and, uh, you know, you work a long days, long hours to me, let's, let's keep it loose and fun. And we're all in the business. I don't care what side of the camera you're on, as you know, just like what you're doing, you're doing it because you love it. Mm-hmm. We're a rare business that people yep. want to do what they're doing. So um, <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's just fun. Do you remember how we met Kevin on the carpet? Um, yeah, it was, it was at that, um, that, wild uh, hogs. wild, wild hogs, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and I told you, you uh, look like that, my dad. It was a Tim Allen movie. I, in fact, I just spoke <laughs> to Tim Allen last week cause I want him in my movie. Um, okay. I enjoyed that movie. It was kind of funny. My wife paid a compliment to Ray Liotta and he just like kicked it back at her. He goes, you think that's a good movie? He didn't even like the movie he was in. So <laughs> it was kind of funny. I enjoy it. I thought it was a funny movie. Let me, let me see you do a good Tim Allen impression. Oh, 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 oh yeah. I can't do a Tim Allen impression. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I love his I last love show. You know, his show got picked up again. Last Man Standing is coming back. Oh, nice. Cool. Which okay. is great. So, very so you know, when, when, I, when I first met you, I said, you look like my dad. And you said, well, that makes me feel old. And I said, well, my dad's not that old. And he's later. later. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> so, That's funny. <laughs> so, so, but I, I wanted to say I appreciate it, man. When, when I, I, when like I met you, you, story. you were you were humble. You know, you were very humble, and you took the time to actually talk to an up and coming reporter that was trying to get interviews and stuff. And wow. I mean, everybody else, no, 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 no uh, insults to anybody else that was in the movie, but they were kind of like, you no, know, not very friendly. And you were yeah, like the only one that really came and talked you, to me. And I was appreciative. You, you've done very well. You know, it doesn't take much to say hi to somebody for a couple minutes. You know, yeah. so. Um, but you, now, but now look you're, at you're, you're, what I know what you're doing because you keep me in touch. What's happening? So yeah. I love your energy. I love that because I'm the same way. I don't like to sit. I like to stay busy. I create a lot of my own work as well. Yeah. And, and you have to. I mean, the best advice I ever got from a buddy back home in Mound, uh, in Minnesota, before I left, he said, "Remember, it's show business, not show show." And then mm-hmm. I double major marketing and advertising, and I say that I market and advertise myself because that's really what we're doing anyway. When you're killing it, man. That's a great comment. That's a great uh, piece of advice. You're doing you're doing really well in 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 the field of social media and technology. And I mean, you must have an amazing team. You know, talk a little bit about your team. I'm curious. I don't have a team. I'm my own team. Really? So, you're the yeah, one. I laugh every time I go to a photo shoot, it's so funny when you walk in the room and they kind of look around, look behind me, and go, "Where's your people?" And I go, "I'm my people." I I don't have. I'm not going to name the person, but one time I was doing Jay Leno. Um, the other guest on the show had about seven other people with him. And I just thought it was so funny. It's like, is that their job to be his, his, his friends? The entourage. I yeah. Entourage. I, don't, I, don't have yeah. That, I don't have that kind of insecurity about myself. So I don't mind kind of doing my own thing. So well, I thought it was just kind of funny. All these, all these hanger honors in a way, you know, I mean, I'm not for, for a guy that's in the industry. I'm not a very Hollywood guy. I'm pretty easy. I'm pretty approachable. Well, there you go. Well, we That's and we awesome. help celebrities interact with their fans, and we have what's called the Easy Way family, and they will support you to the ends of the earth, brother. You know, uh, That's I very cool. You're, well, so you, know, you, you tell me, you got a lot of haters out there too. We live in a very strange time. Oh yeah, so much anger and hate, and you know, people need to look in the mirror and take and take a chill pill. I mean, it's, yep. if your life is turning out the way it is, then change your life. Quit blaming the world and everybody else for your problems, because reality is, yeah. you know. My dad was a school teacher. I'm the one. I'm the fourth of five kids. So I grew up with loving parents. My my clothes were hand me downs. My older brothers. So mm. I started a paper out when I was nine years old. And for seven years, I got up at four thirty in the morning, six days a week, and delivered eighty papers. That's including during the winter months in Minnesota. Okay. My dad taught hard work to all of us. He said, "Get out there and make something of yourself." I'm a thirteen year overnight success in Hollywood. Okay. The biggest mm. lesson I learned. Or people saying failure is a good thing. You're going to fail in life a lot. Life doesn't promise to be perfect all the time. So you got to work and work hard and you will fail, but it's a positive. 
You yeah. learn a lot from the failures in your life and just keep on going. Well, you know, my, my dad, one my, of the quickest ways to fail is to focus on other people and, and yeah. um, you know, Harper hate in your heart because well, what's that saying that says, um, you know, hating on someone is like drinking poison and hoping the other guy will die. The best way is to you just that, get started. You know, that, and that's perfect. And to go with that is don't tell people your problems because 90% of the people don't care. And the other 10% are glad you have them. So. Absolutely. They're like, thank you, God, hold him back. <laughs> but, you know, you know, when it, when it comes to the hating, a lot of times it's because something they did. Like with me, I, I do a lot of stuff and people will be in my circles. They'll be involved with what we're doing sure. and then they'll do something to kick themselves out of the circle. And now because they're out of the circle and they can't, they see all this fantastic, amazing stuff. They're mad because they can't be in the circle. So they go yeah. start hating, hating on you, you know? Are you saying oh, yeah. you have the circle of trust, Eric? Or you're out, we're outside, the of, easy your, way you're circle outside of, of the circle? What's that movie? <laughs> meet the parents? <laughs> That's uh, 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 what is that? Meet, meet the parents, I think you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so, so, but yeah, and, and I'm glad that you, you, you bring that up, Kevin, because that's very inspirational to a lot of people and everybody deals with, with uh, speed bumps and, and obstacles and what, but honestly, you know, how do you deal with, how, how do you deal with that? Will you just keep it moving? You ignore it? Do you actually confront it? You know, I don't ignore it. I learned everything, you know, like I said, I'm always open to look for new doors to go through and keep myself busy. I used to caddy at this private country club when I was in college. And all these guys were really wealthy guys. And I said, how did you get to where you are? And as I mentioned earlier about failure, they all said I failed. And I didn't let that hold me back. Too many people give up too quickly. And they, they just put their hand up and say, take care of me. I can't do it. You can do it. You just, it's, it's, my dad used to say, if life is perfect and everything is great, just wait a while. Because it's always going to change. You're always going to hit a roadblock. you got to find a way in your life to get past that roadblock and stop blaming god or your parents or yes friends or people you don't know stop blaming everybody else you yes. know get out there, well make yes you know it's actually people, that the biggest change is getting negative people out of your life get negative people away from you but anyway what were you going to say i'm sorry i interrupted no worries. I was just going to concur with you and say that, you know, actually what people don't realize is when they hit that roadblock, it's an opportunity for growth. You know, um, yeah. one of the best things I learned when I was coming up in my first time with success was that, um, Oh, believe we're not in my head, huh? <laughs> oh, that when you come to a problem or challenge that you should celebrate it, you should be excited because once you, um, once you, solve that problem it will never be a problem for you again and other people will pay you even to help you solve that problem for them so you know it's really just an opportunity for growth that problem is there to help you get to the next level but so and many people you, quit there and then yeah. they, they stuck right there in that place and that's literally like and how do you get and how do you get better you do you practice you work you 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 you, mm -hmm. you, you get better by doing something instead of sitting around and complaining about it yeah and now, a lot of people I'm want a quick plug from my book i have a book true strength yeah, you have a book too. I, I, suffered, I suffered three strokes on the in a season five on Hercules. I had an aneurysm in my left shoulder that exploded. I, almost, I remember I didn't you telling me that on the phone. Like, and I wrote a book. I, wrote a, so? I had three strokes, and when when at the end of season five, I was coming yeah. back to America to push my new movie called The Conqueror and do publicity. I was having problems with my arm. I couldn't figure out why. It ended up being an aneurysm way up here in my left subclavicle. It exploded, sent hundreds of clots in my left arm, sent three clots in my brain, into my vision, into my speech, into my balance. It took me three years to fully recover from it. I wrote a book called True Strength. And I want people to check it out. I do a lot of speaking events because of uh, that, and I'm lucky to be alive. I know that. I'm very blessed. Yeah. Did you have any problem with like um, getting your arm to move again? Because I have a friend that had a stroke at 36 years old, and actually she still can't That's move. That's how old again. I was, yeah. I'm going to buy that book for her because it's really strange. People are having strokes and aneurysms and all these things so much yeah. younger these days. And I think it's because, you know, things are moving so quickly for people. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think, you know, I was probably having a lot more stress than I was admitting to on the set. You know, I was, I was maybe sleeping four hours a, a night on average. Um, 18 hours door to door a day was common for me. I'm not complaining. I loved the show. We had so many laughs on Hercules and so many good times, but um, you know, it happened. Don't know why it happened, um, but uh, you know, it's. I'm lucky because I could be could have been killed. I could have been in a wheelchair the rest of my life. I mean, there's so many different things that could have happened. So, what's the name of that book again? I'm going to buy that called, for my it's friend. Called, it's called True Strength. Love that. Uh, my subtitles: My Journey from Hercules the Mere Mortal and How Nearly Dying Saved My Life. And um, wow. it opened it open up it open up the speaking roles. I mean, I speak about 15, 15 events a year, whether they're whether they're medical, whether they're motivational, whether they're youth for Christ, 
um, or pro-life or any of those things. I, I do a lot of speaking events now, and that that was a door I never thought I'd be going through, but here I am. So you guys well, can get that at Amazon, here, uh, True Strength. Uh, just look up Google. That's what wow. I did. Look yeah, up there it is at the bottom. Yeah, there's my new movie, Let There Be Light. There's What If. Yeah. So you get just yeah, let's share that on Facebook. Actually, I want to tag someone to that book. I'm going to buy that for her. But and 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 all and all you know, in all honestly, uh, Kevin, I mean, you you've you've done things uh, differently in in a, in a lot of ways and a lot of actors. And I want to kind of get into the helping for the because we have a lot of actors, we have a lot of entertainers, we have a lot of business owners. Uh, sure. But but what advice do you have as a successful actor and an entrepreneur? Because you own your own production, you do a lot of your own entrepreneurial yeah. stuff. So. If you can get down um, that, that road. You know, you just got to go for it. I mean, when I moved to L.A., I didn't know a soul out here. I grew up in a town of 7,000 people in Minnesota, you know, so. Minnesota. Uh, when I got out here, what'd you say? Minnesota. <laughs> I was trying to do the accent. Minnesota. Oh, yeah, you betcha. Minnesota. You betcha. It's a very Canadian <laughs> accent up there. But, yes. you know, I, I got, I got when I got here, I just, I, I got myself into the best acting classes. Everybody in this, you know, everybody here is an actor. So, um, you find out quickly about acting class to get into. I studied under three coaches for six years uh, before I got Hercules. And um, what I did was I already did a lot of commercials through my college years. Uh, I knew I wanted to be an actress since I was 11 years old. So um, get a commercial agent because anytime you're in front of a camera, it's a good thing. You need to put on those miles. It's all about getting out there and doing it. I shot over 150 commercials. I was one of the top oh, yeah. um, commercial actors in America. It's not what I meant out to do, but I'll tell you something. I never had to wait tables or be oh, a bouncer right. or do something. I got out here. Commercials fed everything for me. I was able to pay my rent, get my groceries, pay the mm. acting classes, and I focused focused on the acting. And on top of it, I got to go some amazing places. I shot in South America. I shot tons in Hawaii, and Mexico, and Europe. I mean, I got to travel with these commercials. It was awesome. So to me, it was a great learning experience, and it paid the bills at the same time. What Eric, about didn't you do a commercial in South America also? I did. Yeah, I, I, that was my first and only commercial that I actually booked, but it aired for like four years and I was the face of Axe Body Spray. So my one and only commercial I actually booked was a really big one. But when I went to uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina, nobody spoke English and I did not know what I was doing. I got off a plane and I did. nobody spoke English and it was a very scary moment of my life. But, uh, you know, to, for, for the actors, Kevin... Um, you know, what about booking the audition? You know I mean? Like me, when I went in there, like the role was a rapper that was, uh, you know, like a music star. And so right. I rap, I freestyle. That's who I am. So that's why I think I booked it. But what advice do you have to book these gigs and stuff? Do you do anything? Prep Especially commercials. You know what? Commercial, most commercial auditions, unless, unless it's a speaking commercial, that's when you really have your acting involved. These other commercials you see for all the beers and you see all those beautiful people drinking beers and they're dancing and partying. The auditions are stupid. They're just stupid. <laughs> you walk in there and the director will say, okay, dance. Okay, look over there and eat the chip. I mean, they're just dumb, but you gotta go in there, be positive, know it's gonna be a stupid audition, um, and you just gotta hope they like your look, because that's really what it comes down to. But for me, I built, I built repeat business with directors, because once they had me on set, they found out I was professional, I showed up on time, I wasn't a pain in the ass, um, I was easy to work with. I was, I was eager to help out in whatever way they wanted me to help out. And they liked that. They want to work. So it got to a point where most of my auditions or commercials I got, I didn't have to audition for them because it had been repeat work with directors I already worked with. They would just tell a client, mm -hmm. here's my reel with Kevin Sorbo. He'd be perfect with his role. So that's how, that's how that happened. You know, and it, it's funny. I got to tell you one commercial I booked was an international commercial for Jim Beam whiskey. Mm. I got it. It shot in Auckland, New Zealand. I got down there, this is in 1991, and I'm down there going, this country's beautiful. I hope I get back here some, sometime. A year and a half later, I book Hercules, and I live in Auckland, New Zealand for seven years. So be wow. careful what you wish for and hope that what you do wish for, you wanted. But I did want that. It's beautiful down there. So, so wish, my, wishing is so powerful. If you wish for something, you will get You know get what? It. Put it out there. You got you to yeah. be positive. You got to yeah. believe it. Well, and nowadays you can do it on social media. You can do anything that you possibly oh want. You can, actually, you can create, yeah. you know, I want, I want to go back to when we first met Kevin, you know, you, sure. you were really nice to me and you were the, like, I mean, you have no idea who I would have become. And now I, I own and work, work, I'm a partner and owner of Evander Holyfield's family's TV network. We're reaching 500 million people, countries. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I know Evander, say hello to him for me. 
I will, well, I mean, the, the president and the co-chairman and all the uh, the Holyfield family is watching right now. They're in here and they're, they're commenting. Cool. He and I do a lot of charity stuff together. We go every year in Phoenix. We do the Muhammad Ali fight night for Parkinson's down. They've been going over 20 years. Well, we're, we're, my Holyfield TV, we got to do some stuff. But I, I mean, cool. who Speaking would have um, old friends, by the way, Carrie Brooks is saying hello to you, Kevin. She says you're her old friend. Hello, so there you go, Carrie. You got you got I mentioned you and Dante mentioned you. So we're giving you to look. By the way, guys, oh, you Carrie Brooks too, huh? is the one that actually did the commercial that you guys saw that we were pre building up for this show. So shout out to Carrie. Good job. Um, and so another. So what I was saying is you never know where someone's going to go. Have you ever had something in your life happen, Kevin, where you met somebody, you were nice to them. They might not have been dressed right or whatever, but they ended up being somebody successful that helped you later on or any stories like that. Well, you know, it's, it's funny. This, uh, this is going out to Michael Bay, who is like one of the most famous directors in the world now. Um, I, when I first moved out here, I did a couple of student films for Michael when he was a, a grad student at UCLA. Wow. And he goes on to become big in commercials and then huge in movies. And Michael, you've never booked me in one of your movies. <laughs> so <laughs> I got to give him a hard time, you know? Um, I haven't seen him in years, but I thought that was kind of funny that I did that. And usually there's a payback with stuff like that, but with Michael, there was no payback. So, mm. um, you know, I'm not dishing him here, but I'm going to give him a hard time. Well, there you hey, go. I wanted to ask you, Kevin, you mentioned that you had some coaches and, you know, I used to be an actress. So I know the question that some people would be asking is who were those coaches that worked with you before you got on Hercules? Do you well, remember? One was, one was, one was uh, Richard Brander, who was amazing. Uh, and another one was, um, was, uh, was Roy London. Now Roy London passed away. He died of AIDS back in like 95, 96. Oh. But I was in the, I was in his class in 89 and 90. And then that class was myself, uh, Matthew Perry and Brad Pitt. Oh, so and he was a good before, coach. This was before all our careers took off. And I remember Brad bringing in his audition scene to work on for Thelma and Louise. And if you remember that movie, he's in it for maybe 10 minutes, but he steals the movie. People go, who is this guy? And then on, you know, we're, we're talking after class one day. He goes, yeah, I got to learn how to fly fish. I'm doing a movie with Robert Redford. And I said, what? So he did a movie called A River Runs Through It. Bye bye, Brad. You know, he just takes off the rest of his life. Uh, Brad's a good old boy. I remember seeing Matthew Perry uh, do one of his scenes, and I just said, This guy should be on a sitcom. And of course, two years later, he gets, he gets yeah. uh, friends. So uh, it, that was an amazing class to me. And Roy, Roy was, I wish I could have worked more in his class. He only worked once a month. And uh, with Richard Brander's class, I got up every week, which I like because to me, you got to put the miles on. Yeah, you learn by watching, but I watched a lot of basketball in the NBA in college. I don't get better at it. You got to, you got to do it at the same time. Well, yeah. And Kevin, so you, you said that you're like everybody else. You're not a Hollywood guy and, and you have a wife, you have kids, you, you have a lot of things that you're making happen. How do you juggle everything? You know, what's your day to day? Well, you know, we, we homeschool cause I travel so much. My okay. wife does the homeschooling cause she's a lot smarter than I am. So, um, but we travel. And so the kids have been on the road with me since birth. And I knew what would happen eventually that my kid, my boys especially would say, I want to be an actor. And of course it did happen. So they've been taking classes the last three and a half years. And when I got the movie, Let There Be Light, I said, uh, there's a partner for both my boys, but I have to audition you because this isn't my money. If I don't think mm -hmm. you can do the role, you're not going to be in the movie. They did awesome. So I highly recommend going to Let There Be Light because they're, they're comedy relief in the movie. It's a bit, like I said, it's very touching. I have a box of Kleenex nearby because it will move you, it will touch you. But it's a, it's a, I'm very proud of the movie. It turned out quite well. Okay, I got, I've got questions there now. You know, working with your family, um, you know, Kevin, I had a really hard time in the industry with sexual harassment and stuff like that. And I ended up walking away as an actress. I'm wondering, how did you, you know, how does your wife, first of all, I wonder, deal with, you know, like, do you, do you kiss other women in your scenes? Like, are there any rules? I have a friend and her husband's an actor and the rule is no kissing scenes. And of course, like he has that look that all he gets is kissing Indeed. scenes, you know, so. <laughs> So um, do you have to kiss other women in, for roles? And how does your wife feel about that? Is, is um, Well, she reminds me, she, she reminds me of a movie she was Brad Pitt and she got to make up with Brad Pitt. So, she, oh, she so she's good. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, on Hercules and Andromeda, both those shows, I did kiss a lot of women. I, I must say it, it, it was, uh, it's Especially in there. because you met your wife on that show. I just wondered. That's how we met. We might uh, kiss her on my show as well. Like, how does she not so, worry that you might, you know, make out with someone and fall in love with them? Or like, how, how does that work? <laughs> well, Kevin's like, wait, have you seen me in Hercules? You think she's going to go after anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, it, it's there. But I mean, most of the movies I do now don't really, 
I think because of the, the I'm in the fifties now, it's that age group. It's a whole sort of different thing. It's not, you're not in the twenties and thirties and doing whatever the movies they're doing there. But um, I think most of the movies I do now are pretty, pretty family friendly and they're there, but um, there you, go. you know, it, it really hasn't happened now, but I mean, certainly on Hercules, it happened uh, quite a bit, <laughs> but <laughs> I remember, I remember my first season of Andromeda. I was at one of these Comic-Con shows. And during the Q&A, one of the women asked me, he said, because Andromeda is the first show written by Gene Roddenberry after the original Star Trek series. So my captain, my character, Captain Dylan Hunt, is the first captain after Captain Kirk. And so the woman said, you know, in, in season one of, of um, Star Trek, Captain Kirk Shatner got to kiss like 10 women in your first season. You've only kissed three. <laughs> so I go, well, I better hurry up and catch up. I don't know. But I, <laughs> I think it's funny that people actually keep tabs on something like that. And how I do mean, you feel the, about your sons being in the business? How, you know, how do you protect them and, and teach them, you know, how to navigate the waters, so to speak, and how to choose. Yeah, people? no, no, you're right. I mean, it's, it's, it, <sighs> It's not a perfect business. It really isn't. I, I, I tell people, I go, I love acting. I'm not a fan of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, but I love being on the set. I love the creative process. I told my kids, I told them all about the evils of the business. I told them about the good and the bad. But I'm not surprised they wanted to do it just because they grew up on these movie sets that I'm on. What's but, the what's uh, the evils of the business? I mean, we actually have people asking quite. We're asking about the, that. They're asking, but when you see the, the evils of the business, I want to. Yes, does the Illuminati really run Hollywood? No, no, I don't. I don't want to get in. I want to get in that, but I want to. Oh, okay. I want to get, get the opinion of, of 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 Kevin and and what he feels the evils of the business are and how you can dodge around. Well, there's it. A, there's a lot of politics in Hollywood. We know that. There's a lot of yeah. games. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of favoritism. There's a lot of uh, you know you, you don't get like roles because you're too tall. You're too short. You're too good looking. You're not good looking enough. You're fat. You're skinny. I mean, there's so many reasons why you don't get a job, but it is, there is, the, the, the system is the system. And it's hard to break into that circle. They have the power. They can put out what they want. I mean, Walt Disney said years ago that movies and television influence people. And that can be good and it can be negative. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of negative stuff coming out of Hollywood right now. I think that's why people are looking, look Amen. at this one, latest movie. Look at I Can Only Imagine, about a six, seven million dollar movie. It's made 80, 90 million dollars. There's an audience out there that Hollywood doesn't pay attention to that wants movies that has values to it, has morals, has something they can bring their kids to. You look at my movie, Let There Be Light, they gave it a PG-13 rating. I went ballistic. I called the, the, the ratings board and I said, why did you give me PG? It's a PG movie. But they have, they have an agenda. They didn't want parents that look at ratings they don't want them taking their 10, 8, 9, and 10, 11 year old kids to this movie. Because, because they want it's a more good of it. movie with hope and redemption. They don't, yeah, they don't want people seeing that. I went and looked at, you, you look, you look at, you look at um, the latest Avengers movie, PG 13. There's a scene where they line up women and children and mow them down with machine guns. So I oh. said, why is my movie rated the same as that? Yeah. There's no swearing in it. There's, look, I'm not a prude by any means, but uh, there's no there's no swearing. Nobody's dying. They said, well, there's a scene where you take some prescription drugs and you drink vodka. That gave it a PG-13 movie. Oh. I mean, unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And the whole idea is to show the growth of Netflix. So, so, so I, oh I, 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 don't, I don't even want to get into it, but yeah, there is a lot of uh, content and things coming out. I'm not going to mention any, don't, let's not mention any networks or any names like that, but there is no, a lot no, of crap no, coming no, out. And that, we, know, we know who's doing it. Yeah. And it's just, it's but that's, amazing that's, to Kevin, that's why we're doing TV flip for the for the better. I launch Easy Way. You know, I mean, we're we're yeah. wanting to be a network to help put the positive content. But I got a surprise for you, man. Uh, you know, we were talking about uh, you know your projects and the funding and, the, and and you know and things like that. So I I called a personal friend of mine that specializes in fundraising and, and funding for films. He's actually on right now. Uh, uh, Aaron, go ahead and put on Ryan Torres. Bring him bring him on, please. Ryan. Yes. Welcome, welcome to the show, man. So, so, um, I, I, yeah, I want to, how you doing? Kevin, I want to introduce you to Kevin Sorbo. Uh, I'm sure you know who he is. Uh, he's got a couple films coming out real quick, uh, not too long, but tell him a little bit about your experience, the movies you funded in the past and, and <laughs> what you do. Yeah. Hi, Kevin. How are you doing, sir? Good. How you doing, Ryan? Nice to meet you. Yeah. Likewise. Such a pleasure. Um, yeah, no, I just, uh, you know, I, I'm basically working on this different project. Um, I kind of have like a small circle of people that I deal with. 
that I bring projects to. Uh, some films have equity, some do, some don't. Um, What's one of the on biggest projects film? you have to get funded, Ryan? We got a short amount of time here. I, I love you, brother, but just let's 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 let them know who you are and and what you can do. No, I just I'm working on you know different projects. I, I raised some uh, development money for a film called The Greatness. It's about these three um, Latino kids who are who are deaf and they join the high school football team. So I'm a co-executive producer on that. I've raised some money in the past for um, some matching funds, um, worked with, you know, different uh, investors. But, yeah, I'm, I love the, you know, I'm really trying to get more in the faith-based arena because I'm finding that a lot more people are doing faith-based films. So, you know, um, that's what I'm doing. And I'd love, to, I'd love to connect with you. Eric said I should talk with you and, you know, see what kind of projects you got well, going on. And, and, and you know, Eric's got, Eric's got my contact info, so I give him the permission to pass it on and we'll talk. I mean, as you know, the toughest thing – is finding the funds. I mean, you know, it's just, it's I tough. Know, I know. <laughs> and most of my movies are in the two to five million range. And I know people out there probably think it's a lot of money. That's like catering <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay. They shoot those things for $300 million. So, uh, but we put out movies that have a good message and uh, I, I call them actors movies. I like movies that make you feel, make you cry, make you laugh, make you think characters you can relate to. Look, I like a good ride too. Oh, these right adventure movies. But you walk out, not really yeah. caring for the people. I mean, to me, it's like I want to have, I, I want to have uh, movies that make people uh, that made me want to be an actor. That's why I grew up watching old Hollywood movies because I what's, love. What's, what's the next project that you're working on, Kevin? That you need for the next one's called East Texas Oil. It's a comedy. Um, it deals with the uh, the oil boom and um, boom that was going on in, in Texas in the early 1900s. And I play. Uh, oh, okay. I play a, a con man with another actor that we uh, to be named. We got a couple people interested, and we actually swindle uh, the the life savings from from uh, widows into buying into fake oil wells, and it's a true story. It's a true story. There's redemption at wow. the end, but it's a very very funny comedy, and uh, we're reaching out to some really good people to be part of the movie right now. Sounds sound like something you're interested in, Ryan. Yeah, I love well, the budget. We got um, funded already. You know, David Nixon, yeah, right? Kevin, he did a uh, fire crew. Okay, so Ryan, uh, I'm going to get you connected. Diet. I got to get back to the interview, but I'll get you guys on the phone and we'll see what magic we can, we can make happen the easy way. Thanks so, so much for coming on, brother. Yeah, I'd love to see the pitch deck and see how we can work together. All right, perfect. All right. All right, Kevin, nice talking to you, sir. Thanks. So, so, so right. Kevin, uh, I mean, I, I want to say, man, uh, you know, I appreciate your time. And, 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 and I mean, a lot of actors that are at your level don't take the time to do th things like this, but not to say that I'm small or anything. I'm, I am on television and Viacom, Comcast and Roku and Amazon. And I mean, this is going to get all over the world to 500 million people. And I'm just saying, I, I love how you just slips that in. <laughs> <laughs> But um, but but I appreciate 500 million people, 500 million. Just think a dollar from each person. How many? Exactly. Good <laughs> that's we what should, we're, that's what we need next. <laughs> we should do a sort. We should do a source funding and a crowdfunding campaign to get you next. Movie. Give you a producer credit. All right. There we go. I want to be a producer of the next movie. Guys, Easy Way family. We need to everybody needs to donate a dollar to Kevin's next movie and we need to make it happen. And, uh, and we need to do it the easy way. I launch easy way. But, uh, you know, so, so Kevin. I mean, that's a really good idea. What about creating like a funding source, you know, for Christian, Christian based films and positive films for people that want to see it. And yep. you're just giving like a dollar. I mean, that's so easy. Or we do it through there our cryptocurrency and, um, and then we well, you know raise double the funds. Here, with, 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 with what we have with the network, we have a uh, new beginning. So I know you've heard of that, Kevin. I mean, it's kind of like a sure. Trinity broadcast and new beginnings is one of our networks. It's one of our partners. I mean, we're, oh. we're actually building a Christian network with about 39,000 something churches. I mean, we're doing a lot of things we'll talk about off air, but we, we can get, get the funding through the fans. We can create positive projects and we can distribute it. We have it all. So it's, it's going to be pretty awesome. And, and we appreciate everybody that's popping in. We got a lot of people watching live right now. Um, so Maureen. Wait, so uh, you're not going to show the video I sent you of Kevin Sorbo. That was so funny. You sent me a video, Kevin Sorbo. That's so funny. I, okay. I did my research on you, Kevin, and I came across this great YouTube video of you, and it was like Kevin Sorbo, and it was like hot, 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 hot. And had all these no, hot I'm hot. not going to show that. I know which one you're talking about. Here, here's the thing. <laughs> Voice America has to put it on, not me. We wouldn't be able to hear anything, but I can, I'll, I'll play it a little bit. I'll, I'll show sound. It's cool. just funny. It's just As, like all these great shots of you that you never thought people would take. <laughs> Kevin's Kevin's like, uh-oh. What, what are you talking about? I'm, what, what, I'm, what, I'm what, curious now. <laughs> all, I, all I know is Go to, go to disappointed and see when I as as my alter ego the sovereign on Hercules I yell disappointed it's got six and a half million hits already so really that's wow. pretty funny 
I'm looking it's a, for that. It's a line that I ad libbed on the on the series, and uh, it's gone viral. Kevin Sorbo, disappointing. Oh, here it is. Yeah. You know, Eric. Uh, by the way, my my sound does play. Just so you know, your sound plays. Go ahead. Go ahead and try to play it. Okay, give me a sec. If you got skills like that, D. Uh, so 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 Kevin, um, wait. What was your story, man? What, what what drew you down the road of acting? You know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, were you a kid and you saw something on TV sometime? I was, like I, was uh, I was 11 years old. Minneapolis has a theater, a very famous theater called the Guthrie Theater. You can go online and look at it. And, oh, there it is. And the Guthrie Theater is, uh, is um, uh, a lot of people from Broadway come and perform there. And I was 11 years old. I went to see The Merchant of Venice. It was a school field trip in, in fifth grade, fourth grade, whatever it was. And um, it was Shakespeare. I don't know what the heck they were saying, but I was mesmerized by the actors on stage. And on the way home, I told my mom, I said, you know what, mom, I'm going to be an actor. And she gave me a little pat in the thigh and she said, that's nice, dear. So, but I followed that dream. I, I knew right then and there that I, I wanted to get into acting. Awesome, man. Well, it's it's very inspirational. And I'm glad that you you did that. Now, you and your, your you and Sam... Yeah. You, you guys were talking about, um, all right, so go ahead and take the screen, uh, Dante, show whatever you want. But you guys were talking about going to Israel or something? Like, or you did go to Israel? Because I saw one we of you. Are, we, are hosting, we are hosting a trip to Israel this uh, July 16th through the 26th. So people go to sorboisraeltrip.com, sorboisraeltrip.com. And uh, I've never been. I'm looking forward to go. I, I'm, I'm curious to see it. Uh, we got the best guides uh, lined up. Wait, can you see my screen? Um. <laughs> What the heck? <laughs> What's going on here? It's no, playing, but you can't see it. We don't. We, what, what what link is it? Uh, just email me. Email me right now, Dante, and I'll I'll put it on. I, I I don't know why we can hear your sound, but not mine. We gotta figure that out. Uh, oh, I know because you don't have headphones on. That's why. Um. So 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 Kevin, uh, you know, it's all about engagement nowadays. And you you I think you can teach a lot of celebrities, a lot of influencers, a lot of people that don't know how to do it on social media. You know, I mean, if you're doing this yourself, I give you props because I'm, I'm one of the top 10 social media influencers in the world. I was published by many magazines and all that stuff. And so when I, when I see celebrities that actually know what they're doing when it comes to marketing and promotions and social media and engagement and capturing, I notice what you're doing and you're doing it well. I mean, what, what did you take marketing in some way or communication? Well, I, I, mar I, I had a marketing and uh, advertising double major in college. So uh, I'm oh, not, okay. I'm not, you're better at this than I, I am. Trust me. But I, I, I don't, I, I stay busy. I don't, I don't sit around. So I, I do what I can. I reach out. I meet people. Like I said, I do a lot of celebrity golf events. I, I golf with very high uh, net individuals that sit there that by the end of the round, they like me and they talk to me and say, look, I've always wanted to invest in movies. So um, that's really how I find funding is through private sources. Out there. Golf. So golf it, is the best way to find money for anyone in the financial business. It is. It's it a, really it's, is. I love it. It's a, it's a great sport. It's in, uh, you meet, you meet a lot of great people and it's, it's, it's just, I love it. It's one of the few sports that you uh, can actually, if you go to a PGA event, you can get within feet of, of these best players in the world. Dante, I'm looking for your email. Send me that email. Uh, what so, email so, am I sending you? Uh, so you want me to show some video? I mean, what do you, what are you, you're asking? I need, I need links. Oh, the Kevin so, Sorbo hot video. Just, just, so Kevin, go, just put in Kevin Sorbo hot on you. Just, just email it to me so I can put okay. it up. I love you. Okay. So Kevin, do me a favor and, and, and tell us like some behind the scenes stories or something. I mean, you've had such an interesting career. I know you got some good ones. Well, I always wish that they had uh, they they had videotaped all of our rehearsals. Oh my gosh, that's pool boy. Um, uh, I, I wish they re recorded um, all of our you know re rehearsal scenes on Hercules or even on Andromeda. We had so much fun. We have so many good laughs. There's so many outtakes that never got printed up, which is really sad because uh, there's just there's I don't know there's far there, I think there's far too many to mention. I mean, there was one scene on um, on uh, Andromeda where we were on this planet and they had uh, sort of, they set up sort of a, a scene like from Star Wars. We had all these different creatures in a bar and they had saloon doors and there were these phony boulders outside that should weigh about, you know, 1200 pounds each. I came running through the door with one of these boulders one time and I froze and I said, oh, I'm sorry, I was having a Hercules flashback and I ran back outside, but I got a big laugh. And we, I mean, it was just, it's just fun. Like I said, I like to keep a loose set and I like to have fun. And uh, it's, you know, it, like I said, it's long hours, but let's let's just let's enjoy Dante, what we're switch doing. switch the screen we're, as you're looking for everything. 
What do you mean switch the screen? You're showing the share screen. Everybody's seeing the share screen. Not Everybody's seeing, seeing my screen right I stopped now? taking control of that. I'm the engineer. I'm the I'm the person that knows how to run the show. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> oh, wait. So you can see my screen and I'm the one that's, that's what we're watching. It's you, Eric, your Eric, I got a roll here pretty soon. My son's got a basketball game I got to get him to. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm, I tried to get as much time as I could with you, brother. But all right. So we're going to do some cool we things have, behind the scenes. We got 45, 50 minutes. Yeah, I, got I five I, seconds. You got five seconds to play that video, Eric. I, I appreciate you coming on we honestly uh, we are actually out of time we have to go commercial and kevin needs to get out of here so kevin last final words last messages yes. to all of our awesome fans that are watching live right now uh what would you want to leave, leave them with and by the way shout outs to sam I, I i look forward to connecting her to the grace women's conference uh, yeah I, she's I, interesting she's she's in oklahoma right now she's speaking at the commencement exercises at wesleyan uh, christian university there today oh but cool she's not around she's got a busy day there but uh uh, what do you need from me? I'm sorry. Uh, well, last final words, you know, messages, any, 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 uh, you know, anything you want you know, to say to your fans? And, go, and go, to Kevin, go to kevinsobo.net. There's a lot of information on there. If you want to follow me on Facebook, it's the official Facebook page of Kevin Sorbo. Uh, Twitter, it's K Sorbs. Um, I, I, I do post a lot of stuff. I stay very busy. Uh, I know it's going to upset people and it's not going to upset people. You know, we are, everybody's looking to be offended right now. And, um, I got to run to my safe space, <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's just, uh, let's live and let live guys. Uh, I, I don't care if we have differing opinions or the same opinions and we all have opinions. Freedom of speech is dying. We got to keep freedom of speech alive. Yes, sir. All right. Well, let me ask you one little favor, Kevin. Can you do me a favor and give me a drop? Say I'm Kevin Sorbo and you got to keep doing it the easy way or whatever, anything from your heart. All right, no problem. Hey there, I'm Kevin Sorbo, and it's really, really important to keep it the easy way. I mean, quit being difficult for crying out loud. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming on Easy Talk Live, and right. we will see you and Sam here soon. We'll bring you guys back on, and God bless Love you me. for what you're doing, man. Handshake to you and a big hug to the doctor right there. All right, great um, meeting you, Kevin. Take All care, right, guys. Right. Made my little girl dreams come true. So, guys, this is... <laughs> Easy Talk Live, we just got done with Kevin Sorbo. So you can check him out on uh, easywaynetwork.com and see the archive on this. And uh, we got to go to a commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to have Mel Novak. So we had the hero. Now we're going to talk to the villain. Stay villain. tuned. We'll be right back. And we're clear. All right. We need some, like, villain music. Do we have any, like, trailer music we can play when uh, he comes on? Like, in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> No, you do because you don't have your headphones on. You can actually do anything that you want, but don't take control of the screen again. You 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 showed the screen too much. I love you, but uh, just do the sound. Don't do don't touch the screen at all. I thought you guys couldn't see the screen. That was we so saw everything and all your personal information. So that's like millions of people seeing all your stuff. All right, so so Mel Novak, we're gonna bring him in now. And all right, and here we go, Mel Novak. Let's bring him in, and. All right, go ahead and unmute yourself, Mel. Mel, remember I showed you press the sound button. Go ahead and press the press the sound sound so we can see you. There we go. Talk. Oh, well, I'm here, Bill. All right, and then you got to talk loud, man. Talk so we can hear you. It's Get an exciting closer show. Closer to the uh, microphone, Bill, if you can. You will hear me. There you go. If you, the closer you are to the microphone, the better we can hear you. Because remember, this is television and radio, so we can't hear you. Then it's not going to be good on audio. Get as close as you can to the mic, brother. So welcome to the show. Uh, we're live on, on YouTube right now and, and Facebook. We've got a bunch of people that are on uh, hanging out with us right now. Uh, if you want, I will, I'm going to send you a message, Mel, on Facebook, and you can take this link and shoot it out to your fans and tell them you're about to come on live on air, okay? Okay. Hi, Mel. Hi. How are you? Well with my soul. All right. Every day about the grounds and blessed day. That's what I hear. After the, show, after the show, I got a date with 90 women. 90 women? You know, women's <laughs> prison. Oh, ooh, that's going to be a rough date. <laughs> hey, Mel, can you do me a favor? Just get a little bit closer to the mic. Yeah, a lot closer. Just a minute. Let me just pull it over here then. My goodness. There's one. Now, how's that? That's a little better. Uh, uh, so, so Dante, I do have the video on now. So if you have the audio, turn the, get the video ready. We'll play Kevin Sorbo's video that you were talking about. And then we'll go Wait into uh, to, to Mel Novak. All right. Let's see. Well, we're going to try to sync it up in time. 
just just uh, you know i'll do I'll, I'll i'll talk about the video i'll say one two three and we'll both pl press play at the same time that's the best way i can i can think about trying to do it okay let me just pause how much more time engineer 10 seconds that's okay let's uh you, you ready d yes okay all right guys here we go america.com Hey, you're listening to Easy Talk Live for all you entertainment fanatic fans out there. Brought to you by ProductionSanDiego.com. It's time for entertainment and more. Hey, guys, everybody out there in Easy Way Land, Voice hey America Land, and I Launch Land. You got Eric Zulli and Dante Sears here. So we were talking about a fun video that we didn't get a chance to play when we had Kevin, but we're going to go ahead and play it for you guys now. And then when we come up, we got Mel Novak, the villain of the show. So here's the video, without further ado, that Dante Sears was talking about with Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> Did you press play? Wait, did you press play, Eric? Yeah, don't worry about it. You're not there yet. <laughs> Wait, wait, I'm gonna bring it back. Okay. No, don't touch it. Leave it alone. There we go. I wanted to see Kevin blush though. Okay, that that's that, so go ahead and turn turn it off now, Dante. Turn the music off. All right, guys, when we when we are back now, turn the music off. Turn the music off. Turn the music off. Turn the music off. The music's off. Dante, turn the music off. The music turn is the off. music off. The music turn is the off. Turn the play off. Okay, well, maybe that's me. I don't know. That's me. Okay. <laughs> no, that's you. Mine's okay. off. Okay. I don't know where that's coming from. Well, that's all good because we have technical difficulties on these shows sometimes. And uh, there we go. I got right. it. Okay. Well, that, that was a test run just to see how stupid I could look on my show. You guys like that? All right. We're back. Easy Talk Live, uh, Dr. Dante Sears. We are here with Mel Novak, guys. Welcome to the show, Mel Novak. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. All right, all right, all right. Mel Novak, man, you, you've you been doing a lot of things as an actor. You've been very – get as close as you can to that microphone as you can, too, though. You're still a little bit low. Um, so, so Mel, you you have been – I mean, you've worked with Bruce Lee, man. I, I mean, I don't even know how to introduce you. I mean, you, you, you've, you've worked on, on Skid Row. You work with Prison Ministries. You, your IMDb – is 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 ridiculous in fact I, i'm not even going to tell that i'm just going to read off your imdb credits because i want to do you justice correctly as best as i can but i mean while i'm uh, trying to find this um you worked with bruce lee that's that's awesome i mean what was it like while you know being being an opposite role and working with bruce lee on, on which movie was that game of death game of death seven weeks in hong kong and the fight i had was from eight at night to late in the morning in the rain long night but he was great nobody liked him never will be i agree 100 percent, man so uh all right well i got i got your imd be open so what, which uh, character did you play in the, in the uh, game of death bruce lee i was uh an assassin named stick oh yeah i remember that you guys remember that ah did, so did you fight bruce lee what'd you do and what'd you do in that movie well i was i was the man you know i took care of anybody need taken out that they they would have me do it Oh, that's, 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 I mean, I can't, I, that, that's, so, that's so awesome. The, so, fight um, in there, the music was, uh, by John Barry was incredible for the ending. When, when we had that fight to the end. Look at that. He's got one, two, three, four, five credits just in 2018 above the, above the fold there, Eric. Are you, are you kidding me? He's, he's a star of a new Amazon prime film that, uh, that's, that's out right Syndicate now. Smasher. Huh? Seneca Smasher. Syndicate Smasher, yeah. yeah and what, my, what, my, my building's above the title. I had to start rolling it. Great. What, what I, character do you play? I play Milan, a mafia, Chinese Tong, Yakuza, and the Russians all trying to kill me. I'm playing a little bit of your Bruce Lee here. All right, so so Syndicate so, Smasher is that what it is? Yes. Fantastic! Congratulations. 
Thank you. And so, so I'm I'm just gonna go uh, uh, across your IMDb credits here, uh, here, um, uh, Mr. Mel, and uh, I mean, just I, I want to give you give you justice because I mean, you're you're a pretty legendary actor. You you you're, you're the villain. I mean, that's why we called you the villain on the show. You're not really a villain. You're actually a very a nice, godly person, and you do a lot of awesome things. But uh, I'm just gonna go along your credits here, and if you can remember, in fact, I'm gonna say we're gonna play a game here. You ready, Mel? Yeah. I'm going to say one of your movies, and you're going to tell me which year the movie was. I, I've been doing it for so long, I can't tell you which year for each one. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'll I, tell you which character. This well, actually I, wouldn't work anyways because you can see my screen and you can cheat. No, but I mean, I mean, here we go. 1970, you had Which Way on, in front. You have the FBI in 1971, Mannix, Black Belt Jones, Chuck Tur Turner, Virginia Hill, The Ultimate Warrior, The Blue Knight. The Blue Knight. Black Belt uh, Jones. Beretta, Game of Death, and you played Stick right there in 1978. Uh, Cat in the Cage, Force and One, Tom Horn, Force Five, and Eye for an Eye. An Eye for an Eye, is that a 007 movie? No, that's uh, Chuck Norris. Oh, that's a Chuck Norris movie. What'd you do there? I was uh, another low life. <laughs> <laughs> So you get Sword of Heaven, uh, uh, Lovely but Deadly, Sword of, uh, Sword of Heaven again, Force of Darkness, Family Reunion, Capital Punishment, Expert. Well, I mean, who has this many credits? To Eden. <laughs> I keep thinking your screen is my screen, Eric. I keep trying to like scroll down because I'm looking at it up there. Do not touch my screen again, Dante. You are revoked from all screen touching. You privileges. totally did way worse. All you screen touch. You, you get you get audio. You get audio privileges. That's it. I'm just kidding. Uh, so so Mel, hey, welcome to the show, man. Let's hear your story, man. How how'd you get started? Why did you go down the uh, the road of of uh, of uh, of an actor? And, and I know you're a producer as well, right? Yes, I produced uh, five films. Uh, I didn't come out here to be an actor or a minister. Uh, when I got out of high school, I had 60 scholarships in football basketball track, signed a pro baseball contract with Pittsburgh. And a year and a half later, I'm a cripple. I got butchered. I got an 18-inch scar on my shoulder. And I came out here just to get away from people criticizing me that I, what I should have done. And, and uh, I started out, I, I had a job at an insurance company. This gal says, you look great in clothes. My, my cousin's a modeling agent. You want to meet her? That's where it started. From there to uh, acting school. And, uh, and you talk about Black Bell Jones. That was the first big movie that I did. And the director was Robert Klaus, who directed Game of Death in Hong Kong. And two thirds through the picture, he said, I love your work. I'm going to take you to Hong Kong to, to do the Bruce Lee movie. So uh, I thought I blew the role because I came there in a gangster suit, gangster hat. And the last line I'm reading with the director was look at him, he's sweating just like a pig. So I grab him by his shirt, I said, look at him. He's sweating just like a pig and I spit on him. And he, he, he ridged <laughs> and said, thank you very much. And I thought, I thought I blew it. On, on the way home, as soon as I got home, the phone rang and Oscar Williams said, hey man, he loved you, you got the role. That's how I got uh, the game of death. And then I worked with Buell Brenner and Max von Sydow with the same director. So it was, uh, you know, it was amazing how those things happened. And uh, to get into ministry, I was, oh, here's, that's me shooting the uh, 50 caliber. Uh, Syndicate smasher. You were, you're, you're the one with the uh, red headband on. Oh, there you are. The red yeah. headband guy, right? I had the main role. My building was above the title on it. And uh, it's, uh, I led the director to the Lord, incidentally. And I'm really? Next, yeah. Because I don't, I don't hide my, my ministry or what I do because I, my ministry is with broken people in Skid Row and prisons. Easter Sunday was my 36th year anniversary on Skid Row. And my birthday, June 16th, is my 34 year anniversary in prisons all over the country. Wow. June 1st, I'm going to be going to Pelican Bay, which is the worst one in the country for the 12th time. Well, you, you kept telling me that you're going to hang out with like a thousand uh, women or something like that, right? Today? Well, well tonight is uh, I'm doing a service at Chino Women's Prison. It's mm. a hardcore. There'll be about 90 to 100 women in the service. Oh, wow. Well, that's awesome that you're taking uh -huh. your time to, 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 to do that. 
the calling. I mean, I, I, I've done over 8,800 8, services during my, my ministry. Wow. And, uh, it's, it's not easy. You know, what? a lot of darkness, a lot of spiritual warfare. I'm, well, how, I'm, do you play the, how do you play the villain and, and be a Christian? How does, no, how does that work? I'm curious oh, about oh, that. You, you're not, you're killing the topic. Uh, did you hear what he just said, Dante? I, I, <laughs> he just said spiritual warfare. You have to stick to that. Exactly. That is spiritual warfare we're talking about. What, what, but I want to know what he means, you know, and what you've gone through spiritual warfare-wise. Warfare you know, I mean, you've been around for a while. Well, I should have died seven times. Now, I never did drugs. I never drank. I've had 28 surgeries. I was crippled for five years from pro ball. I went from a world class athlete to a cripple, and that was really tough to handle. Uh, there's demonic entities wherever you go in a ministry like I have. Mm -hmm. It's real. You cannot take spiritual warfare lightly. There, I have a prayer on my uh, spiritual warfare prayer. Over a million people have it now called God's Arsenal on my website, melnovak.com. M e l n o v a k dot com. I'd encourage you to to pray daily, and I gave that to you, Eric, for you because of all the good work you're doing. You know, you become a target. Thank you. I need it. I mean, this the, the, this show, guys. I'll give you give you a little story. Uh, the devil did not want this show to play, no matter what. I've never I've never had any problems. We prayed this morning, and I had to go down and get this uh, camera cam. I mean, it was amazing, Bob. But you got it done. We we got it done. We're here. But you know what? We prayed the blood of Jesus. We we had. I mean, I called up all my prayer warriors. I had like a thousand prayer warriors started hitting this thing. Like, and now, uh, bam! It, it all it all worked out. It, 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 and you know, I mean, it's it's very real. You're right. You're right, Mel. So here's your website, by the way. This if anybody wants to go check out Mel Novak, you go to melnovak.com. Uh, here's here's what it is. And and as as you saw that movie is awesome. I mean, that actually lo that looks like a really good movie. I want to go. I want to go watch it. Is that you right right there? That's all me there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So what, yeah. What, 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 what's some of the, the more memorable roles that you remember? And, and what's some roles that you didn't like? Well, I'm trying to think of what I didn't like because. Uh, He's I, like, well, as long as I got paid, I liked it. I like that movie, Villain and Street Hero. I've done, uh, I've done some, uh, roles where I got very little money from a friend, Leo Fong. Uh, I don't do it for the money. You know, I'm able mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, in, in my ministry, I never got a paycheck in uh, 36 years. And my nonprofit owes me over $50,000, but God takes care of my needs, not my greeds. Amen. Or 19. Mm -hmm. But uh, I enjoyed, yeah, I did almost all the movies. I did my own fights and stunts. I did uh, three or four movies with uh, David Huey that uh, I really enjoyed uh, but I was a villain you know sort of heaven all all those all those pictures I've died 21 times in movies and uh, but recently in the last three years you know did uh, the syndicate smasher but it's, it's on Amazon right now but also uh, checkpoint how long ago let me ask you this man how long ago did you film syndicate smasher that what? was uh over a year and a half ago and and how old i i, I don't want to offend anything but how old you're you're older right you're you're not really in the. you might be over 50. you, you remember ja, uh, the, the comedian uh jack benny he was 39 every year <laughs> well the reason i'm saying I, that i, I mean the, the, offered, the, i just the, got off a roll yesterday and he wanted me to play the lead. It's an $11, $11 million movie. But the guy was 35. And he says, well, I, I can't play 35. I paid <laughs> 550. So hey, I got another role, which is really good, co-star. And uh, so, you know, age is a consideration. Let's see, I never drank, did drugs, smoked, drank coffee. Yeah, positive. I, I love it. Herbs and vitamins a day. And, you know, I, I walk with the Lord and I go about his business. So the Holy Spirit keeps you young. <laughs> there it is. Amen. Well, we're going to introduce you to uh, to Boomer Boost. 
It's one of the, our sponsors, actually. Oh, and it keeps, that would be so wonderful. Yeah, it keeps you You're probably good. not a baby boomer. You know, you might be on the little y- bit of a young side there, Mel, but it, it could definitely help you. Look at her. Look at her being all nice and kissing up. Like when I when I brought up the age, and I'm, I'm trying, she's trying to show that I showed that you're older, and she's trying to show that you're younger. Oh, she's trying to was... show me up on my show. It's like, all good. I love hello. it. Hello. We're just. <laughs> appreciate that i always hold up the opposite side to keep the balance but my and that well that's why i chose you as my co-host in this awesome show but and i mean plus every every actor every single uh uh guest that i bring onto the show always wants to talk to you and that's why i have to jump in and go it's my show no but hey mel um (laughs) what i what i was trying to get to is you're you know you're older i mean you're not you're not as young as you used to be but yet you're you're playing a young role you know, you, you're, I mean, you're, you're doing a lot of action stuff. And so yeah. the baby, the baby boomers, the older people that, you know, might be inspired by that. Yes. What, what is it that's, that's allowing you to do that? Well, I pray for supernatural strength, divine energy. Amen. The thing Amen. is, I, I'm, I'm balanced. Uh, I do my Skid Row prison ministry. Like I average like 16, 18 services a month. And then I'm working on a film. I mean, I have, five pictures waiting for release tells of frankenstein in october uh when it rings with sally kirkland uh, that's my that's my good friend by the way shout out to sally she's she was actually yeah. me, me and her were on the board together with the multicultural motion picture association i saw you and her yeah precious lady uh i got one hour to live i played mafia uh another one fight or die uh another mafia i mean it, it just i'm getting blessed i see that i mean so 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 how can a little bit of you rub off on a lot of our easy way family members that are trying to trying to be actors i mean so how you know what kind of contest can we do for them to like rub their shoulders on top of you and see if some of you will rub off rub off on them because i I don't know a lot of like uh actors that are booking as much as you are what's your secret it it's just uh i'm just trusting in the lord you know he got me Psalm 32, 8, he says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. But see, what I want to encourage everybody, and I, I've given Luke 18, 1, probably 3,000 times, don't give up. You keep on praying. Mm-hmm. If there's something that's going to glorify God, he's going to open that door. Whatever door he opens, no man can close. Revelation 3, 8. Mm-hmm. But you got to be prepared. I, I used to give private acting lessons in the, on camera technique, cold reading. You can't just walk in to say, oh, I'm, I'm going to be a you, you can't believe how many people say, I want to be a star. I was in the penitentiary ministry, and this guy was a huge guy. And he had like four teeth missing. He goes, hi, how could I be a movie star? People think if they can be a movie star pro athlete, they're going to be okay. Listen, the bottom line. Jesus Christ and salvation. So, so, so Mel, um, you know, media and entertainment is a powerful platform, you know, and, and very influential, right? Yes. Have you noticed that there seems to be like a battle going on between who gets the most response? You know, like, have you ever noticed that if you're embarking on a project that, you know, that brings attention to faith and glory is that, that God seems to, you know, come under attack? You will be under attack. I, I, it's happened to me, uh, I, I turned down five films in the last three years because of the compromise of my walk. I, there are things mm. I, I won't use God's name in vain. I had 10 throat surgeries in 10 years. In wow. 28 where I couldn't talk for seven weeks each time. And I, I will never do that. I, I've lost roles, but that's okay. I wouldn't do nudity. And I raised my two daughters. Uh, and they're just things you can't do. But you're so right. Uh, I remember going in on this TV series to play uh, a preacher. And this casting says, what are you doing here, Mr. Mr. Villain? I says, well, you, you probably will never have me back again. I told her and the producer and director, but I am an ordained minister. So for you to say that is it, not cool. Mm. And I walked out, you know, but it's the thing is, uh, what am I here for in this life? If you'd see some of the people that I led to the Lord, were cha- their lives changed. No more drugs, no more alcohol. I got families back together. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, you, you, it's, th- this is it. And uh, I, won't, I won't compromise. I, in Acts 5.29, it says, I need God's approval, not man's. Amen. I love, so, I love that. I love what you're saying. No, that's wonderful. 
This lady on Facebook said, no, no back. Is there, is there a pig in here? It's yeah. Rico. He wants attention. And so he's snorting and oh, it's Rico. by my feet. <laughs> Yes, he's like nobody's paying attention to me. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Are you are you an animal lover, Mel? It was just me, Mel. I had I had a, a white Eskimo Spitz in Pittsburgh. His name is Snowball. When he got hit by a truck, I never had a dog after that. Oh, I'm so daughter, sorry to I, hear that. Shizu, I bought that, but that was just too too hard. Hey so, Mel, so I do, I do have, I do have my question about, you know, how do you play the villain, and then, you know, like how do you play it sort of the opposite of who you are so well, and how did that happen? Like, did you, did you aim for that, or did they just say, oh, you look like the perfect villain? And Mel, when you answer that, I want you to lean forward as much as you can because that sounds really good when you do that. <laughs> yeah, the first, the first villain role, really good, I was on Mannix, and. Uh, and then after that, I got a couple more villain roles. And but Black Belt Jones is the one that opened many, many doors. It was the third biggest money maker that year. So uh, I'm a good actor. And you know, it, in what, when I'm at the Skid Row or prisons, they see the love of the Lord in my heart and how I hand, how I, how I am with people. But in the in the, in the movies, I play some nasty people. There was a lady on Skid Row says, Mel Novak, you need to repent. All those pictures with guns and, and, and the movies you do. So I, I answered back and I says, well, I never got a paycheck in 36 years. My, my nonprofit owes me over $50,000. So if you want to pay me what they're going to give me, then I won't do it. Never heard from her. <laughs> But well, and there's another side to that, too, is like, you know, as Christians, if we only stay in the church, if we only stay in, in the, you know, in the places where Christians are, then we won't reach the people that need to right. be reached. So even right. though you were, you know, pictured with a gun and all that, imagine when those people go and look you up and see your website and it says soldier for Christ. You know, what a whoa. You know, yeah. what a surprise. We, we, we don't have a whole lot of time left. I want to get into your show that you're doing with I Launch Easy Way, Mel. You're, you're going to be doing a show with us. Tell us about uh, you know, the prison systems and what the show's about and what we have to expect. Well, the prison is, is worse. When I started out, there were 750,000 men and women. Today, it's over 7 million, over 14 million on parole. Speak up. Can't hear you, sir. This is important information. There's over, when I started out in prison ministry, there were 750,000 men and women incarcerated or in anywhere in the world. Today, you've got over 7 million, you've got 14 million on parole. That's ridiculous. Skid Row, we have 75,000 people down a Skid Row, all over, homeless. See, people don't understand you got a devil who came to rob, to kill, and to destroy. Yes. So it, it's a time where we got to, you know, Prayer invades the impossible. I, I, I lost five people last year that I loved with cancer. I know uh, your, your dad, Jim's a cancer survivor. Yes. Oh my. So well, you know, actually, actually, that event is where we kind of became friends. I mean, you and yeah, I have, yeah. have seen each other eight, nine, ten different times. But after you heard me speak and who I am a, as a man of God, God yeah, brought us together. Yeah. And, and now we're making some, some awesome moves. I love that. I love that because doesn't matter what other people say you saw a miracle which your dad had and it was a miracle as mine yes sir yeah so uh i will continue in my ministry uh, i got a, another starring role called robocop you know robo woman that's coming up in august don't tell me you're going to be wearing a wig and playing robo woman no 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no i put her together oh cool a lot of dialogue, a lot of dialogue. So, so is, is that like a, like a big film? Is that, what, yeah. what, what is that really? Yeah. It's, and then it's set up for a sequel. So, oh, wow. That's cool. So it's, can yeah. we, can we get that for I launch easy way? We, we, we want all these, all these good, uh, good films. Yeah, of course. You know, we'll, we'll just get it together. Uh, Fight or die should be ready. It's not another one in post-production one hour to live. I had a delicious role as the mafia. And <laughs> they said, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a, I am a Christian, but in, in the movies, I love to play villains. I'm not going to lie to you. There must be something wrong. I do have a lot of flaws, so it comes out in, in the work. 
Well, I was letting you go, Dante. I mean, so when, when I'm quiet, I let you yeah, rock and roll. Honestly, well, I love it. I love that you're honest about you know who you are and, and your your yeah, struggles yeah. as well as your triumphs. I think that's important. You know, a lot of times people they can't see how to get from where they are now to where you are. So I think it's important when people are honest about you know their lack as well as their abundance. I I have letters three feet high of people who their life is not a disaster anymore that I, you know, that I, I minister to whether in prisons or not, or in Skid Row. And that's, that's, it makes your heart really sing. I worked with um, the Union Rescue Mission, which yeah. basically rehabilitates uh, a, a homeless person and helps them from A to Z, you know, dentistry and just everything you can think of from, from beds and, and food and just really just, just, changes the the if they have ptsd or, or anything that that's that's wrong they 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 put them through a whole program and it's actually pretty incredible to watch and and go ahead yeah i was the only one in the, in the 110 years on their union rescue mission radio program that they had that wasn't the street person and this is how my ministry started i was invited to the union rescue mission at easter sunrise service as a celebrity and I had like 25 street people there that I was talking with and giving, encouraging them and uplifting. And that's when the CEO said, you got to start doing a service here. Sure. L.A. Mission, same thing. Fred Jordan Mission. And then the, in, in, in the L.A. County Jail, Chaplin was a big Bruce Lee fan. So one of the guys who got out called him and said, you're not going to believe a stick. The assassins is a preacher down here. I've been all over the country in prisons. Wow. God opened those doors and because we're all called to serve. Amen. Yeah, Matthew 20, 28. So shout outs to Andy Bales, the CEO of Union Rescue Mission. I, yeah. I appreciate what they do. It's it's uh it's it's awesome. So so uh That's so Mel. Awesome. So so you have been doing acting for a long time. And I always ask this, I asked Kevin, now I'm going to ask you, give us a good story, man. Give us a good behind the scenes story that you've never told anybody that you, that you think that is like, God, I don't want to tell, tell this, but it's a good story. <laughs> uh, there's so many of them, but what, what would be the, the, I gave you the one about Robert Klosser. I spit on him when I gave him the line. Uh, yeah, I was watching that on Friends uh, when Joey and and uh, and one of the other actors and the, he said something about when you when you act you have to enunciate. So when when you enunciate you spit, and <laughs> but actually it's true. I think I, and same thing with hosting. When you're hosting, you have to enunciate. You have to move your your mouth to where people can really hear you on the radio. Well, you don't have to enunciate like that. But when yeah. I was doing Eye for an Eye, I, again I played uh, a guy that was a drug pusher, and yeah. I was dressed up like that. And on the streets up there where we were shooting, this police and I was messing with this knife. And this policeman came over and says, You better put that knife where I'm gonna arrest you. And I says, you know, just hit the road, man. And he got a couple more policemen, they came over, they were gonna arrest me. And then the production manager came over and says, Excuse me, he, he's one of the actors, he got a co-starring role there. So there <laughs> I was, I almost got arrested. No, I was, I was in my role. When I get into my role, mm -hmm. I, I focus. And uh, it was uh, the same thing with uh, Tales of Frankenstein. We had, uh, you know, I played a mad scientist that uh, implanted the brain of this young detective into my pet gorilla, Gargantus. It's really, it's good. I'll tell you, it's going to be a good film. Uh, Don Glute wrote, produced and directed it. Uh, and then with, with Steve McQueen, he wanted, Steve wanted me to play the, the, the sheriff, but the, the director wanted Billy Green Bush. So I couldn't do it. So all at once they get a call from Fred Weintraub. He said, it, it was three o'clock in the afternoon. He said, listen, Steve just fired three actors. They couldn't handle dialogue. Uh, we, I've got a plane ticket for you to leave at six o'clock. And I says, yeah, but when do I get the script? When you get here. When I got there, it wasn't ready. And it's an hour to, to the old Tucson ranch. And uh, finally, I got the script and I'm working on it. So in wardrobe, someone says, Mel Novak, yo, uh, 
Steve and her director, why don't you play this other role, the bigger role? And I said, and here's, here's the dialogue. We're, hurry up, we're going to be shooting in five minutes. I thought, oh, Lord. So we're, 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 in, the, we're in the street reading from it. And, and a John Alonzo, the cinematographer, said, hey, that's great. That's exactly what Steve wants. I said, I didn't get it. They just gave this to me. He said, you better pray for, for so that they have a lunch break. I'm saying, Lord, Lord. Sure enough, we, we were in there ready to start shooting. So I said, we better break for lunch. And that's where I really went in and, and worked on it. And, uh, you know, Steve, Steve came to the Lord seven months before he passed. And uh, I used to minister to him. And uh, he's a great guy. Mel, Mel, do me a favor. Uh, tell Dante that she's too beautiful to keep, uh, you know, popping out of there and disappearing like that. Say, yeah, Dante, you're too beautiful to be leaving us like this. Yeah, because I'm I'm all dressed up. I smell nice, and she left. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I've had this out of control piece of hair in my face the whole show, so I was I like, know, "Oh, but that's the fun of the show." Off. Stop! You're not allowed to turn off the video. It. I'm telling you, that's what makes you still the look good, Dante. You're still looking good. <laughs> Thank you. I just got tired of doing this. I was like, "Let me just take it off camera for a second." <laughs> now, now everybody that's watching sorry guys that's listening that knows my woes. Not watching, but everybody that's watching is going to like watch that hair and what it's going to do <laughs> yeah. well you just have to do a replay and see it swinging in front of my face like a, you know like a five-year-old on a swing I love it. But so, so, so Mel, um, what, what about, uh, you know, personal life, you know, what, what's your way? I mean, how do you, how do you, uh, if you say you want to meet somebody that you, you, another half that you happen to be feeling that you might want to date, how would you approach them? I'm just going to flip the whole thing. <laughs> well, I can I'm, answer that question for you, but I'll let Mel answer it. I'm Billy Bold. I go yeah. right, right, right to them. I look right in the eye. Cause I want to see what's happening inside where their heart is. They got that sweet spirit. And uh, then he want to know if they're, you're equally yoked with them. And I'm open, you know, I, I haven't been married for a long time. Uh, I got a great relationship with my daughters. Uh, oh, I have cool. a, yeah, I have a Bible study every other Monday, which a lot of people come. But on a red carpet, I meet, I meet a lot, a lot of them. And there, a lot of them are young where you could, you could be taking them out. Eric. <laughs> well, I have a beautiful girlfriend that I love a lot. So I, I don't think she'd, she'd appreciate that. But what a lucky girl she is. Wow. I know she's amazing. So, but what about, um, Mel, what about acting? What about uh, what, what not to do? What, give us, give us some good, what not to do is if you're wanting to be an actor. Oh, good. Don't be a diva where, you know, you think you're, you're the whole thing. If you get a role, no matter how big or how small it is, you're going to do it the best possible way. But you got to be focused and don't mess around on a set to, and be in whatever they tell you. OK, is this OK this way? Be able to do a scene two or three different ways and see what the director wants. And like like Kevin said, uh, I got a lot of roles from other producer directors that I worked with. Because they knew I was always on time, I always had my lines, never screwed around with drugs or alcohol. And I've been, I've, I did some movies with some big people that were, were getting loaded. Don't don't be messing with no freaking drugs or, or what, what people would those be? And gossip, gossip. We want some gossip. No. <laughs> We've all seen them with the tray. I'm just kidding. We're not we're not a gossip tabloid a tabloid show. If you want to tell us, you're welcome to. But uh, you know, I, I was just wondering what other what other big roles and who you've acted with because all I all I got is Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris. Yeah, Yul Brenner, Max von Sydow, uh, Gig Young won Academy Award. Well, uh, well, you you just recently won an award. I, I was I was there uh, when you I saw you in the parking lot. Remember, and yeah. uh, you you won an award. Uh, I believe it was from Elham and uh, and the uh, yeah. Win International Film Festival. Congratulations on that. I mean, you won a bunch of awards. Well, I've had four martial arts Hall of Fame awards and uh, three Living Legend awards. You Did know, you say martial arts Hall of Fame. Yes, four. Awesome. Wow. And, you know, when I got my last, the fourth one and the third Living Legend Award, uh, Jim Thomas called me up and he's saying all these things, nice things. And what was your favorite award? I told him I was a single dad. I raised two daughters. I was voted mother of the year to Brownies. 
<laughs> well, you know, if, if this wasn't audio and not on the radio, I would ask you to, to, to try to mimic the karate kids crane kick as best as, as best as you could, but that probably wouldn't work out. Cause we'd have a bunch of uh, uh, blank audio and, and you might hurt yourself. No, I'm kidding. I uh, love that Mel, Mel, that you have an old school TV in the background. Do you not watch television that much or do you? Oh no, that's been there for, I, you know, if someone wants it, I give it to them. That's and a placeholder. That one. I got big one upstairs and big one in my, by my friend, uh, fireplace room. So, 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 so Mel, we have, we have a little bit more time, time. Uh, you know, is there anything in particular that you wanted to cover? I know you have your new movie coming out. You want everybody to go watch your movie. Uh, is there anything you're producing, anything you need help with any, anything that anybody could shadow you possibly that could help you? I, I wrote, I, this is a, a, a project that's after my own heart called vengeance is mine. I wrote the treatments. Say up the Lord. And, uh, but I play a twins. One is a real badass detective who likes to break ribs and everything. But his brother is a preacher on Skid Row with long hair. So all of a wig on that was round glasses. But it's really touching. Uh, a lot of action, a lot of stuff. But my wife gets killed. Uh, I'm, and I got the two daughters. And I thought you just said you're single. Now you have a wife? No, no, no. This, you know, I know, I'm kidding. Can I be funny on my show? Is that okay? Hey, I'm being funny too. I'm the comic relief. Exactly. Don't don't we go so well laughter, together? Laughter is like medicine. Absolutely. Yes, it is. And I'm good at helping people. There was a guy who had 999 years and a 99 day sentence in Florida. I still got him to laugh. Could you imagine? <laughs> yeah, that's rough. But but it, it's good to have fun and laugh. Uh, and you know, con every day is a blessing. My goodness. So we we have a, a lot of people still live watching, guys. I'm thinking of a number between one and fifty. Whoever gets closest to the number, Mel Novak, myself, and Dante will shout you out special and mention your website if you put your website down. So we're thinking of a number between one and one one and fifty. So go ahead and you know post your comment, put your number. Shout out to all the Mel Novak thank fans you, out um, there. Um, thank you. Garcia Robinson said that she'd like to have Mel Novak be a speaker at the Grace Women's Conference. I would love it's it. His spiritual, but, he, but he's got to wear a wig though, because it's only women, right? Oh no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know they say every Hollywood star's got to wear a dress one day, Mel. So that will be your day. Just joking. Listen, <laughs> no, but I, I, I'll have like my signatures always with a with a suit and two tone shoes. But Mel, we definitely we would uh, love to invite you to the Grace Women's Conference on August 10th and 11th. I, I'm producing that uh, with with uh, Monica Garcia Robinson, who's the executive producer. And right. the, the, the event is purely about helping women find faith that are lost and hurt, pretty much. And I uh, would love to have you be an honored guest uh, to, to come down and support us. I would Absolutely. love to. You know, Psalm 147.3, God says, I will heal the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds. You've got Beautiful. people walking wounded everywhere. And that's what this is. That's very good that you're doing that because so many people are hurting, abused, rejected, abandoned, betrayed. Those are issues of life that are brutal. Yeah, I think it's important to help people around the world. You know, they say that the human heartbeat can actually be felt around the world uh, and also heard. And so um, you know, it's just so important that we give back and that we recognize oh, yeah. others that are suffering because you never know when it could be someone in our family, someone we love that someone else helps. So I love the idea of, you know, paying it forward. Um, and that's what we do with prosperity coin. We're all about creating solutions for, for people that are suffering because, you know, even Jim Carrey said he, he was homeless. He was living on the streets, you know, and there's, there's so many people that are successful now that went through hard times. So, you know, if we, if we, instead of looking down at them, we offer them um, a hand up. I think that's a beautiful thing. So we want to say we appreciate uh, um, the uh, coffee company that keeps us going. Uh, yeah, acid free my daughter. That is you, awesome. Hey, Tyler's so, coffee this morning, powered by Tyler's coffee. Mel, don't you? I, I, I hate this. Every time I touch this bag, it's like magical. See all the messed up uh, background and like it like puts yeah. all the static. So, what, what is that? This green, is this green. is one of our sponsors. They're called Tyler's oh, Coffee, yeah. and you you've tried it. You you said you loved it. Uh, yeah, acid free. Daughter, I took it up to Oregon to my daughter. 
Yep, yep. So Tyler's Coffee, you guys can get 20% off if you use the promo code EASYWAY and you go to tylerscoffee.com. Shout out to Tyler's Coffee. Uh, so Mel, you know, you've been a really fantastic guest and you're looking spiffy. You're looking awesome, man. So so can we offer something to our fans maybe to be hang out with you on set or shadow you or something? Like, let's, let's, give, let's give back. We're talking about giving back. Let's give back to the fans that are listening and watching. What do you think? Yeah, sure. I'm always open. Yeah. Mel's well, like, yes, TV anything you say goes there. Maureen guessed 47, so she's the only one guessing the numbers right now. So, All right, well then, then, hey, Maureen, the, she's the only one that's gotten into the action. So, Maureen, you've won the, won the contest. So, oh, wait, uh, Jeffrey uh, Jeffrey says 34. Now everybody's starting to pop pop in. Uh, so, so we got 34. We Actually, the number was 50, so Maureen did win. Uh, so, Maureen, congr- you know, that, that's Maureen Cooper, guys, with I Launch Global. Uh, which is this- Maureen Cooper. The beautiful Marine Cooper, which one of our partners, I launch global, I launch easyway.com. And uh, I mean, you're already a part of the family, Mel. So definitely guys check out I launch dot TV. Uh, Marine Cooper, it can help you in anything to do with TV, part of the Holy Field family. Uh, shout out to Marine Cooper. See, see how it works, guys. If you would have guessed, if you would have gotten the action, you would have got all this camera time and all this awesome stuff. So, so Mel, uh, once, once again, your website is melnovac.com, right? Yes. And you, you're 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 fighting for God. You're helping the homeless. You're you're doing some. You got an amazing project coming out with I Launch Easy Way. Uh, you you have your show coming out. Uh, you've done tons of stuff in martial arts and and uh, and film. And you're, we're going to be offering an opportunity to be able to hang out with Mel on set, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll do something on Easy Way Access. So check out Easy Way Access. See, wait, whoop, Easy Way Access. See him behind me. Easywayaccess.com. Uh, Easy Way Access, and then you can talk to Mel. You can hang out with Mel. You can get to know Mel because he'll be on Easy Way Access. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you how you can win the shadowing program. And, you know, so thanks so much for coming on, Mel. We got to bring on our next guest. 007 but, uh, Mel. 007 Mel. Yeah. And congratulations on the movie, man. You look great with Spiffy with the guns and, and, uh, and, the, and the whole suit. And you're, you're, I think you're giving 007 a run for his money, in, in my opinion. So you're, you're that's awesome, my, brother. That's my email. Nails, N-A-I-L-S 007. There it is. Right, Nails 007 at gmail.com. Are you just giving his email out to everybody? Yeah, because everybody needs to contact. We, we engage our fans. We help the celebrities interact with the fans. We want people to contact Mel, and I'm sure he wants some fan mail. Uh, I hope that wasn't your personal fan email. Fan mail. But... What a play on words. <laughs> fan mail. Skid Row called me the mayor of Skid Row. Wow, that's that's awesome. Thanks so, for uh, your service. So I'm going to bring in Jeffrey Stansfield, guys. He's our next next guest, and you're welcome to meet him, Mel. He's he's a he's a, a production guru. Uh, he's a production guru extraordinaire. Hey, he's everybody. Easy way. Hat. There he is. Hey. No, now, hey. notice how everybody that was on our show, guys, none of them got the audio right, except for the professional that knows audio in the production. Welcome to the show, Jeffrey Stansfield, Advantage Video Systems. Hey, man. Glad yeah. to be on your show. <laughs> Finally made it happen. So, hey, uh, Jeffrey, meet Mel Novak. Mel Novak, meet Jeffrey. Hey, meet Mel. Jeffrey. I really appreciate the work you're doing. It, it, it's it's uh, re- really really good. I I actually uh, work with the uh, work with the prisons as well uh, a mm. lot. I, we, we're doing some broad we're building uh, broadcast uh, redoing the TV stations in the prisons for the state of California. We just uh, we're working with uh, all the all the 33 prisons in the state of California to to rebuild their TV stations because uh, each of the prisoners have TVs in their prisons. Yeah. Except the ones that have dormitories. They have you know. TVs at the end of the at the end of the uh, at the end of the dormitory. So I've ministered so every level three, yeah. level level three, level four in this state. Yeah, all the prisons, San Quentin, uh, Pelican Bay, Donovan, all of them. Yeah, that's a great thing. If you need me for anything, just let me know. I will. I'll keep you. I'll keep you in mind. So I'm 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 gonna take you off now, brother. Thank you so much for coming around, right, and you have an awesome day. God bless. God bless you, brother. You too. All right, guys. So we are now with Jeffrey Stansfield, who, for some reason, we're, uh, I don't know why I'm not getting, uh, getting you on. Uh, why, why am I not being on the, wait, there we go. That's my bad. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so, so Jeffrey Stansfield, guys, let me tell you guys a little bit about who Jeffrey is. See, he's so cool. He's the only one that I'm going to double it up. Okay. I'm going to give him two camera angles because he's so cool. Like, like that. that. That's not what you're doing. See, that's Jeffrey Stansfield. That's why that's how we did the advantage video system. They do all the cool stuff. We don't even know how to do. How'd you do that, Jeffrey? What's the magic? Uh, well, I have two cameras. Exactly. <laughs> and you, you you logged in twice, right? I logged in twice. I want that two camera shoot. Smart man. So so guys, uh with you know, Jeffrey has I mean what what studios have you built, man? Tell us a little bit about yourself. 
Well, uh, so my company, Advantage Video Systems, I mean, I mean, uh, you and I have talked about partnering, we're partnering with you, which is the big exciting thing that we're doing, which is partnering with the Easy Way. I got here. Yes, sir. Uh, I launch easyway.com. I launch Easyway. So I'm partnering with you. I'm partnering with Denise over at SheTV and Holyfield. And we're doing a, a lot of really incredible things um, with you guys. And we're going to help uh, bring you guys in. We're going to build studios together. We're going to bring a lot of people and build up the networks, shoot a lot of live shows together. But for the last 17, 18 years, uh, my company has has been on the forefront of the video and production, post-production and broadcasting industry. Uh, we've designed over 250 TV stations all over the country. We're one of the largest builders of video podcasting studios. People like you who are out creating uh, OTT and CDN networks and stuff like that. Um, and we've built a number of post houses and VFX houses and you know we're members of Simpt. I'm a member of Simpty. I was on the board of Simpty. I work with a lot of board members on the uh, on the standards committees for uh, what is know, Simpty? For those of those society of motion picture and television engineers. There it is. The, it's basically when you whenever there's something anything on in the media entertainment business, there has to be a standard for it. There has to be a, a set of standards that that the whole that the whole thing works. So no, so everybody works the same. So everything works across the whole world. And SIMPTI is the is organization that sets those standards, Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers. And that's what I'm, I'm a board member, or was I was a board member, I'm not a board member this year, but, and I, I advise on the standards committees, help them with them. We do a lot of stuff with that. And so, and I, I'm part, I, I'm a part of that, the Hollywood Professional Association, which is a connection of them, and uh, Women in Post and Women in Film. Uh, we sponsor so many different organizations uh, and we're part of them and we help them. And so that's kind of like what we do. And, and um, so we're doing that. We're launching our own, uh, our own uh, broadcasting studio where people are going to be able to come in and check out all the technology working in a, in a full environment. And then if they want, and then we're going to be producing our own shows coming up uh, this, uh, this year. Yeah, I got to tell you, man, uh, we were, you, you, thanks to you, we, we just were at uh, NAB, National Associations of Broadcasters. And when I was walking around there, I was shocked shocked on how many major a-list level brand name companies knew who you were and i actually got clout i got a lot of love just because i was wearing your advantage video systems you know so so i mean i was shocked at how many people knew who advantage video system was you are way bigger than people people think well you know yeah i mean because we were out there every day i mean i'm part of the technology i mean when companies go out and 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 invent technologies and come up with their stuff they come to they come to me and they ask me to help them, you know, test out their technologies. They come to me and, and I, I investigate all this technology. So when my clients say, oh, I want to do this kind of this kind of thing, we can design uh, a, a, a whole new workflow. You know, we had one client who was moving into an office and we were going to say, OK, they want and they said we want to shoot in any room in the office on the three floors of our office. Well, to do that, we would have to run thousands and thousands and thousands of feet of SDI cables and all this stuff. But instead we used different technologies to actually work off the internet networking technology. So you can just plug a camera in any office and it would automatically route to the, to the, to the server room where the broadcast facility was and be able to, uh, you know, uh, shoot a cute on a moment's notice at any room. And we do a lot of things. We have a system called executive, Sim a workflow called executive simple that we work with offices. And so high end executives like Leon Musk comes into a office, you know, he's not a, a hundred dollar an hour kind of guy, you know? And so he, when he comes in, he needs to make sure things work a hundred percent right there within two minutes. And that's kind of like the technologies that we work with and workflows that we work with. And we're experts at everything from asset management to archiving to storage. I mean, we're working, we work with some of the biggest people in the industry. They come to us because we know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how, how'd you, how'd you get into that, in that position? I mean, like you, you're on the digital Hollywood uh, situation. You, I mean, there's a big event coming. Let's talk about the, uh, the event coming up that you invited us to. It's a big event. Oh, at yeah. Tama, so, right? I mean, I oh mean, yeah. We, the convention. We, so we speak at about 20 to 30 conferences a year 
and we go to a lot of conferences. So mm -hmm. this month we're speaking at two different conferences. We're speaking at the Digital Hollywood Conference at the Skirball Center in Hollywood. That's next week. Um, and we're us and, uh, and, uh, and it's an incredible conference talks about, it's morally, mostly about the technology that you're into, which is the OTT channel, over the top television or CDN, content delivery network TV, which is people who want to deliver uh, the broadcasting over the, over the standard internet instead of having an FCC uh, branded uh, yeah. station number. Everybody um, wants to learn that. So that's so they're talking about a lot of that. There's a lot of companies we work with there, Soho Net and different companies like that. Wowza, who's a great streaming engine, and all these different technologies. These people are going to be there, and there's and there's a lot of really fun stuff there. Um, you know, uh, the guys who people who run it always have astronauts there. They do a space thing because they're space freaks like I am, um, and uh, you know so. Um, so that's going to be one conference. Another conference we're doing, I'm um, doing a keynote at a, a, co a conference in, in, Playa, in Playa del Rey called Creative Storage Conference. Tom Coughlin runs his thing. It's an incredible conference that they talk about. Uh, and then on the June 5th, I'm actually going to be working, speaking at, a con at another, another meeting with a guy named Bill Walsh, who's a really uh, good startup invest startup coach that helps businesses start up and then, and on june 5th down at the lax at the westin i'm going to be speaking at i'm going to be speaking there on a, on a couple of different things as well so you know we speak at a lot of different things we're also involved in a, in a big show down in la called cinegear which is a gear show for the production people mm -hmm. and um that's the one at paramount right that's the one on paramount where uh, it's three days on the Paramount lot. You can go on the Paramount lot if you Google Cinegear. I think you can still maybe get a free pass if it's not if it's not blocked off. If well, it's blocked off, you can call me or email me at Jeff at Advantage Video Systems .com. The spelling is like the little thing on the back there, and you just email me or call me at 800-287-5095. I know the people there. I can probably get a couple of passes if you if it's blocked. Let's, let's offer a pass right now. I mean, we're registered. I'm sure we get uh, you know a, a, a plus one. I mean, if anybody wants to be able to. Uh, you know, come to that event. There's always opportunities at easywayaccess.com. But we got to uh, close up now, brother. I mean, is yeah. there anything in so particular? I just, yeah, wanna... I just want to say, well, first of all, uh, I'm wearing this pin here. Oops, over here, because I'm backwards. This is the Red Cross pin. I'm doing it to honor my great-grandmother, who was part of the Red Cross, and I'm a, I'm a disaster manager of the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Mother's Day weekend. I wanted to wish any all mothers, including my mother, Valerie Stansfield, a very happy Mother's Day. My aunt in, in New York. Helene, I wish her happy birthday, happy Mother's Day, and all the other mothers out there and people who are mothers of either dogs or cats or mice or any kind of people, who whoop, whoop. all women who are mothers of the mothers of the universe, mothers of the world, I want to wish you all a happy Mother's, mother's. Day. So. Well, happy happy Mother's Day to everybody. Thank you for the for that, Jeffrey. Shout outs to Dress uh, Dress Entertainment, D DSP DSP Productions. Love them. Uh, shout outs to everybody that uh, that that uh, tuned in. Uh, I want to try to give a little bit of love to everybody that tuned in. Peyton, Mariah, uh, Robert Clancy, uh, Carrie Brooks, uh, uh, everybody. Michael Parrish, uh, anybody else that uh, uh, Monica Garcia, Sean M, um, Casper, uh, Dante. I launch TV. Yeah, I mean, go ahead, Dante. Anybody Robert else that I'm Nancy, missing? Nancy, Carrie Brooks, Avatar. Parish. I don't know who Avatar is. Yes. I'm just going through all these comments that we got on YouTube. You guys can check it out. Easy way to uh, <laughs> com forward slash easy way TV. So we got to go, guys. But thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's Thanks show. For and remember, AdvantageVideoSystems.com if you want more information about us. And and Mel Mel Novak. And so I'm going to go ahead before we. Uh, before we before we leave, we'll go ahead and show you guys uh, Advantage Video Systems because I know a lot of people need this and it's very important. And I know that it's been very helpful to us on uh, partnering up with you and actually hiring you. We started out by hiring you and it was it was amazing. And so we decided to partner up with you and make it a little bit bigger. We got a big uh, big event launch coming up with the uh, San Diego. Uh, it, it's at the uh, in in San Diego. It's about a twelve thousand five twelve thousand foot building which is going to be for for business owners and sound stages and this is advantage video systems you can check it out i'm going to introduce you to that so again guys thank you so much to kevin sorbo and mel novak and all you guys all of our easy way fam and especially voice america all of our our partners i launch global i launch easyway.com and everybody make sure you go to easywayaccess.com and the group 
uh, our Easy Way Fam group. If you want to connect to anybody, digitally handshake, do what we do the easy way. Thank you so much. We got to go, but we'll catch you guys next week. Cryptocurrency is, is prices have gone up. So make sure you go to easywaypay.com and get in on it. Yeah, the price is going up to like five dollars. Oh, so it's like two dollars now. So. I had to cut you off there. We're all clear. Oh, okay. Well, but we're still we're still live on YouTube. So the prices uh, are 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 two dollars now, but they're going to be about five dollars. And so if you guys um, want to uh, get the coin, it would be very smart to get it now because it's going to go up a lot. And when when is that going up, D? Um, next week it will be going up to um, one one hundred Ethereum per token, which is about five six bucks a coin. There it is. So and and you can redeem the coins for marketing services, promotions, all the stuff that we do. We give back, uh, and it's just way 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 more cost effective. So make sure you guys go to easywayaccess.com. All the information is on there. Be a part of the community. You can meet Jeffrey Stansfield. You can meet Advantage. I mean, anybody that's on our show, that's the best place to meet them and actually connect with them, do business with them, know about our events, easywaynetwork.com. We have our, our calendar, so everything's on easywaynetwork.com. And you're looking good in that hat there, Jeffrey. I'm, I'm, I'm liking that hat. That's a good look for you. I, 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 so, so a good friend gave me this hat. Did he? I love huh. it. I, I heard I heard that those good friends are pretty handsome and pretty talented right now. Um, well, 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 one of them, one of them that is right. Good, I'll tell you that. <laughs> what do you say? I, I, I like I like the I like the hair. It's beautiful. That little that little hair thing that bothers you. I like it. Oh, yes, it, it, it's <laughs> it, it rocks and it, and it, it makes it work for sure. And and, and so so th thanks again for everything that you do, Jeffrey. You're awesome. Thank you to all the Easy Way family out there that's been supporting us. Uh, make sure that you check out my magazine. I am in uh, myauthenticlifemagazine.com. My Authentic Life. I just came out on the cover, so please support me on that. Shout outs to My Authentic Life. And we do have our cover. Uh, coming out here real soon, and what you'll find out who it's going to be. June fifteenth, Easyway Magazine comes out. You're going to see a lot of our Easyway fam. The issue is about distribution and positioning. So if you want to learn how to get more reach and how to position yourself for more reach, uh, that's that's definitely the issue you want to pick up. So thank you so much. We love you guys. Keep doing it the easy way. I'm going to say bye bye the easy way. Dante, go ahead. Oh, well, hey, this is Dr. Dante Sears on Easy Talk Live with host Eric Zuli, Jeffrey Stansfield from Advantage Video Systems. Make sure that you grab some Tyler's coffee and join us next week at 1 p.m. on Easy Talk Live right here on Voice America, Easy Way TV. Jeffrey? I launched Easy Way. Bye-bye, everybody. See you later. <laughs>